You thought we were done with this. Nope. Crash 4 wasn't the end of it. We're starting over. Because time is a flat circle. So, why am I replaying Crash Bandicoot 1? On PS1. This isn't even the Insane Trilogy. This is the OG Crash Bandicoot. Well, there are a few reasons that all kind of lined up together. And you might notice one of those reasons on the left side of the screen here. So, a few things happened recently. Uh, our YouTube channel became eligible for monetization, so as part of that, I need to go back and set all of our videos to whether they're monetizable or not. And a lot of the old streams that we did at the start of when we streamed in like 2016, 2017, were really bad. So I've actually been unlisting a lot of them in order to like up the average video quality on the channel. Uh, Crash 2 and 3 were alright. The Crash 1 streams that I originally did were kind of, uh... They were kind of busted by bad audio levels. So those were the ones that got unlisted. Which gives me a reason to play this game again. Just so I have a, str a stream of it on the channel gonna be weird if anyone watches this first and then goes back to the Crash 2 stream. Uh, the other thing that's happened recently is that I've discovered this site called Retro Achievements, which I was always kind of loosely aware of. I didn't really look into it much until the, uh, until I started emulating PS2 games because the PS2 emulator has Retro Achievements built in. With like, uh, it, it has like a full overlay and everything, so it'll it'll pop up with little icons and things, like you know, Steam achievements or PS3 trophies would. This isn't that. This is a PS1 game, obviously. So I this play being played on a Bizhawk. Which also is there's re there's retro achievements for a lot of a lot of games on a lot of systems. Bizhawk is just kind of the everything else emulator. Bizhawk kind of plays everything. And it has achievement uh, support, so I've been replaying a lot of old games using Bizhawk. Just for something to do. See, there's one. It's not as flashy on Bizhawk. They don't have the icons like the PS2, which is disappointing, but... You'll hear them pop. I also unfortunately don't think uh, Bizhawk emulates quite as well as uh, EPSXE. So this feels a little bit weird to play. I don't think it's just Crash 1. I, th I, think, it's, I think it's the emulator, but that's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll manage. I would like to do this whole game today. That's my plan. Actually, you guys can't see the achievement text because it's uh, it's cut off. There's an uh, there's an overscan. Ah, there's an overscan that I chopped off. Let me see if uh, so. If I click this, it should refresh. strange. Uh, because this is Crash 1, I also have to, uh, I have to, I have to not die to get the gems. This, this is a little bit rougher than, uh, Insane Trilogy. Insane Trilogy made it a lot easier. There it goes. It just, it took, it took a little while. 
I wish there were a way to do this in, like, uh, in real time. Sadly, there is not. So, I just have to, I just have to refresh it every so often. Well, I have to restart this level for the gem. That's okay. I remember correctly there might have been one for destroying all those boxes without jumping on them yeah that's one of the weird uh, one of the weird achievements there's not too many of them most of them are very uh, very like ordinary. There is one of those quirky achievements for destroying that whole line of boxes without jumping on them. Uh, one of the games I've been uh, I've been playing recently for the achievements is uh, the first Crash Game Boy Advance game, which I did a stream of, but I didn't hundred percent it. I still like it. I, I kind of wish that I'd had that game as a kid because it plays pretty well for a uh, 2D side-scrolling crash game. It's not perfect, but it's good enough that I would have had fun with it. What have we got? Oh, maybe if I just, uh, maybe if I just walk across them. Oh, I'll bet that's how you do it. Come on, run fast. Ah, uh, that didn't do it. Man, I jumped. I shouldn't have jumped. The first one broke and it made me worried. Maybe it's just a resources thing. Maybe Bizhawk just runs uh, not quite as uh, quite as well as other emulators. EPSXE specifically. Every now and again, it will just kind of stop receiving input for a second. Which is bad for fast-paced platformers. I'm, I'm waiting for it to happen during this stream. Eating inputs aside. Yeah, that's been my big complaint with it. There we go. Uh, the the handheld, the, the Crash Bandicoot Huge Adventure, the GBA one, it just, it just kind of doesn't let you take multiple inputs at the same time. So you can't slide and then jump on air. That's too, uh, that's too many inputs at one time for GBA. The, like, the, the, the helicopter spin is very inconsistent. What else? The, uh, the the running is very inconsistent. The speedrun strat in that game is basically to uh, to run and spin. Because if you jump, there's no like running jump animation. So if you jump, you go back down to walk speed. What the, the you know what this feels like? This feels like Castlevania. Again, I think it's just Bizhawk being quirky. I feel like I don't have as much control over my uh, momentum after I jump as I should. Those are really hard games. 
the uh, the game well the Game Boy Advance the huge adventure one. I actually didn't end the game with 99 lives. I didn't get a game over, but I've c I've come close. I don't need to be I don't need to be doing this. See, now I'm in huge adventure mode where I actually like need to worry about getting fruit because I need lives. I don't need lives in this. I'll be fine. I'll refresh the I'll uh, I'll refresh the achievements at like the end of each level. So when I play old games like this, I kind of assume that ever that people have played them. Oh, I missed something. Anyway. That might be a flawed assumption to make, especially now that the Insane Trilogy exists. So, uh, probably a lot of people haven't played this, like, this original version of the game. Oh, it was the- because there was the green gem. Okay, so I need the green gem before I can get them all there. So there's no slide in Crash 1. There's no special abilities like double jump or uh, the, the, the helicopter spin, nothing like that. It's just running and spinning. And that's pretty much it. It's Mario, but he spins. Which means for things like the Insane Trilogy, like the relics, it makes it a, like a very tight, pure platform experience. You really just have to do everything very well. I, 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 might, I might prefer that over like uh, over like the the later games for time trial purposes, just because I appreciate the attempt to have like more technique to it, but. All that it ends up doing is that you just end up slide jumping all the time. Ah! Oh. I don't remember if this level has a uh, has gems that I need to ride. Like it's it they attempt to add more technique to it, but it's not really adding technique. It's just kind of adding. It's like wave dashing in Super Smash Bros. Melee. Yes, it's movement tech, but if the, you're just doing it all the time, then it's just kind of adding busy work. Crash with a run ability is really the same as crash with a walk ability, except now you're holding the R2 button the whole game through. It's satisfying, isn't it? Just seeing him go at it like that. Uh oh. Ah. Oh, that's right. And you only get one chance at bonus levels in this uh, this game. I mean, I'll get another chance if I uh, if I collect the three tokens again. But it's not like the uh, Crash 2 question mark platforms. I can't just hop on again. Hello, elf. Uh, the big difference, as I mentioned, is that in order to get the gem in this version of the game, you have to A, get all the boxes, but B, also do it without dying. So if you don't get through the level without dying, then you don't even get the chance to see, like, how many boxes you got. Which, in Insane Trilogy, they, they kept that with the colored gems, so only, like, five of the gems in the game. In this, it was every gem in the game required that.
Which, eh, I can see why people say this game is hard. I never considered it that hard. Maybe it's just because I grew up with it. But, like, I also grew up with, with Mega Man, and Mega Man is hard. Mega Man is way harder than Crash Bandicoot. I didn't grow up with Castlevania, but Castlevania is way harder than Crash Bandicoot, like the old Castlevania games. I grew up during NES hard, but this isn't hard. Look at him. He's just a little dude. You can do- you can- you can play with him. Crash Bandicoot is very doable compared to NES hard. I don't think I ever 100%ed Crash 1. Uh, the original or the Insane Trilogy? Insane is definitely easier. Not counting. Well, I guess there's the relics to consider, but, uh... The relics in Crash 1 or in Insane Trilogy were kind of annoying because these levels aren't really designed for time trials. There's a lot of obstacles where you just kind of have to stop and wait for the right moment to pass. Probably made all of this commentary during my Insane Trilogy Crash 1 playthrough. I remember most of that one also had audio problems. I'm still going through the old stream, so I don't know which ones I'll uh, I'll keep and which ones I'll delist. All the streams are still on the channel in the uh, the streams playlist. I'm not going to take anything off of that, but uh, they'll just be off like the series playlists and the the public view. I think I mentioned I also delisted the After Dark stuff because, uh... I'm not, I'm not, like, that embarrassed by it or anything. It's just that I, I kind of get tired of, like, all of... It, it, it's, it's like all of our most popular tab views. That gets a little old. Like, I kind of want people to see the other stuff. I wonder if, uh, that achievement I mentioned earlier with, uh, breaking the boxes without, uh, without jumping, I wonder if the mask was the intended way to do that, or if there's a way to do it with just, like, spinning. Maybe I'll go back and do that. Crash 2 in Insane Trilogy took me 11, 12 hours for all Platinums. But this obviously doesn't have time trials, so this should go way faster. It shouldn't be that bad. Yeah. At any time, there's like, uh, there's gem platforms on a level. I am just have to come back to it. It's, it's going to bother me that I don't have this one when I could have gotten it. Thankfully, the uh, Crash 1 achievements are very doable. They're very reasonable. Most of the retro achievements are. They mostly have uh, pretty good sets. I've encountered a couple of bastard ones. Uh, Pokemon Red and Blue have a couple that look like they're going to be annoying. There was one for, uh, like, uh, beat the Pokemon League with a level 50 cap team. Alright, here we go. There was one for, like, buy all of the game corner Pokemon in one session. Ah! That's alright. Oh, no, it's not all right. Oh, I lose my mask. All right. 
Anytime I have two masks. Anytime I have some masks, I'll just come back to that. Actually, you know what? No, I just need to... Because there's three masks on the level. You know what sucks is that I 100%ed uh, Wrath of Cortex, the achievements, before I realized that there's a there's this thing called Hardcore Mode, where uh, if you don't activate it on your emulator, what it does is it disables like uh, it disables save states and uh, things like that. So you're playing as if it was on the actual console as closely as possible, and if you don't have that enabled then you have, like, a little mark of shame on your achievements. Like, oh, you did the soft core. There we go. Alright, that wasn't too bad. Which, I'm glad I discovered that as early as I did. I, but, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, have to, I'll have to redo Wrath of Cortex at some point, because I don't want that. I don't want a mark of shame. <laughs> did you already, uh... How many did you already get, there? I'm sorry, I should have told you about that, Darian. I forgot. How many uh, Castlevania achievements did you get before hearing that? If you do it hardcore, it overwrites the old ones, so... Defeat Papu in less than 15 seconds. Oh, okay, if you say so. Is that too slow? That was too slow. Again, you can't see the, the little text because it's cut off with the, uh, with the, the overscan. I'm gonna try that again. I can do it. I can do 15 seconds. Oh, don't pause. Damn it. Alright. It re I failed the achievement because I paused to look at the achievement. very good at this. Not gonna lie, Papu got some jank hitboxes. Sonic noises. Yeah, it's, uh, the achievements have, like, little Mario noises that play when you either start an attempt or when you get the achievement. There's also, like, uh, leaderboards it includes. I have those turned off because otherwise we'd get, like, noises at the start of every single level. Man. Why why am I so inconsistent at this? This isn't hard. It takes a long time for him to be vulnerable. Alright, I got a mask now, so I can just kind of tank it. Thankfully, it's not like without getting hit. It'd be way harder if I couldn't lose any masks. Also, do you always start boss fights with two masks? Because that's very generous, if so, for this game. If that's the case, then I completely forgot that fact.
Ah. Unfortunately, even though I'm starting from the beginning of the level, I think that still won't count. Which is dumb. I don't like when games do that, when you have to, uh... When you have to, like, do something in all in one go. It should still consider it one go, unless you start at, like, a checkpoint or something. Because I'm still starting at the beginning of the level. The only difference is that I go through the tedium of, like, returning to the map again. Crash Game's got a couple user interface flaws at times. A couple not user-friendly uh, functions. Oh, which one is the... Uh, is it that one? Yes, yeah, that one. When I played the... Uh, the... GBA games. Actually set my controller up to, uh... I remapped my buttons to emulate the uh, PS1 crash controls. Definitely made it feel a lot more natural. Oh, no, I needed that, I think. Well, I hope I didn't need that. I didn't need that invincibility. What about you guys? How are you guys today? I 100%ed uh, Ocarina of Time since starting this Retro Achievements thing. That had a couple annoying ones because I was desperately trying to avoid having to do two playthroughs. But there were, uh, there were a couple achievements that almost mandated it. Come on. Ah, fuck this. Like, there were a bunch of, uh, achievements for beating hearts and doing, like, a three- uh, beating parts. Beating bosses and doing, like, a three-heart run, which I'd never done before, so that was new. And there was... Okay, the big conflicting ones were these. There was one achievement for beating the game with uh, three hearts, no maps, and no compasses. And then there was a separate achievement for beating the game with all maps and compasses. And it was marked as missable. And I wasn't sure why, because my plan was to do the three hearts run and then go back and collect everything and beat the game again. The problem was that uh, in Jabu Jabu, the map is behind a button that you need to have that you need to leave Ruto on. And once you clear the dungeon, Ruto's not there anymore, so you can't do that. I actually had to use like a uh, I had to use a speedrun trick. I had to use the. Uh, ocarina item duplication thing in order to get into the room that I was not supposed to be able to get into. So I saved it. The other thing that was annoying was there were two achievements for Volvagia. One was for beating Volvagia with three hearts, and one was for beating Volvagia without wearing the Goron tunic, which requires you to have more than three hearts. So I had to, like, uh, I had to, like, go around, collect a bunch of hearts. I, I had to back up my save. I, I did, like, reset my file to an old save is what I had to do. Here we go. The first ride level in Crash Bandicoot. There's no run function. These are kind of like the... I, I guess when I think about it, these are kind of like the minecart levels in Donkey Kong Country. 
which I always liked. I think I'm weird like that. A lot of people seem to hate those levels, and these levels as well. I actually like the novelty of having, uh, like, one element of the game removed from the game. Like, I no longer, lo no longer have to worry about movement. These are basically like Super Mario Run levels. Which I wouldn't like a whole game of. I don't love Super Meat Boy Forever, but, uh, as a type of level now and again, yeah! I think these are loads of fun. I'm already not going to get the gem because I died once. Uh, there's also... There's an achievement for, uh, like, missing a bunch of boxes on a level. So I, I need to find a level with lots of boxes and then just not get any of them. I'm going to try that again. I can get the gem here. If I can get a gem on a level immediately, then I'm going to, because I don't remember which ones are colored gems. And I want to get the colored gems as soon as I can. I need to see how bad the achievements for Crash Twin Sanity are. I didn't look at that one. Having achievements might inspire me to actually 100% that game for the first time. I mentioned I did I did Wrath of Cortex, and that wasn't too bad. There were achievements for all the Platinum Relics, but those were... Uh, the Platinum Relics and Wrath of Cortex are generally very easy. The hardest ones were actually the ball levels, which I wasn't expecting. Like, they really want you to book it through those marble levels. Ah! I should just... I should have gone back to map. What a senseless waste of Bandicoot life. You know, it's a good time to refresh every time there's a loading screen. That seems smart. Eventually, I think we're just going to see, like, the top of the list. Because the, uh, the browser source in OBS is uh, not that functional, sadly. I haven't done Majora's Mask yet. There's a lot of games that I could do but haven't. You, you know what's one that uh, I've started? I started Dragon Ball Z Ultimate Battle 22. Don't know why. It's a terrible game, but I grew up with it. And the achievements seem doable, so why not? I'll, I'll add it to my to my EP and to my gamer score. Yeah, how big is your gamer score? I joke, but I actually always liked the idea of having, like, an achievement score. Because I grew up with PS3, which, uh, you know, I grew up. I was, like, a teen during the PS3 era. And the trophies were cool. I did, like, go out of my way to, like, 100% a lot of trophy things, but, uh... I don't know. I, I saw, like, the Xbox, like, you, you'd get, like, a score for how many, like, total trophies and achievements and things you'd gotten. And that seemed cool. We didn't have that on PS3. Why is the browser suddenly not showing up? That's all right. I'm going to give it another level. Uh, I've noticed this site, when you look at game pages, it can be a little slow sometimes. It can, it's, it sometimes fails to load. So I think that's just what's happening. There's 64 achievements for Twin Sanity. What what are some of the achievements for Twin Sa Twin Sanity, Darian? Enlighten us. 
I'm curious as well. Because you're right, there weren't relics in that game. There were lots of, uh... It had, like, gems just sitting out in the world, right? That was kind of the first Crash game to do that in any amount of abundance. Ow. Crash one. Getting impatient. I want to make good time now. I keep almost jumping into the fire. Another thing you might notice about Crash 1 versus later games is that there are no nitro crates. Those were added in Crash 2. I'm going to try to refresh at the end of this level. You really don't get, uh... Boy, it's it's nice in later Crash games how they you can, like, check the total number of crates in a level at any time. You really can't do that in this one, can you? You could do it manually, I guess, by, like, counting the boxes you've gotten, and then it'll tell you how many you missed at the end of the level, but... Boy, they made they make it a pain. Tall order for kids to get through these levels without dying at all. It's fine, I guess. I mean, we needed stuff to do back in the day. We didn't have internet. We didn't have phones. You know what we had? We had Crash Bandicoot. Love it or leave it. life. Okay. It's kind of disappointing that I go through all this effort of, like, getting every single box. And then I just, I see a color gem path that I can't do yet, and it's, I'm like, oh, It was all for nothing. I don't think there are, like, colored gem paths in this game that just lead to gems. They pretty much all lead to more boxes. Like, if there's a colored gem path on a level that I can't do yet, I, I can't get the gem on that level. It's just the way it is. 
We had to listen to E3 on our transistor radio. Man, remember when E3 was, like, not for gamers? It was for stockholders. And it was just the most boring corporate shit. It used to be the case. Uh, I think RT Game did a stream recently where uh, he went back and he watched, like, the 2003 Nintendo E3. Which, again, this was before it was, like, a media event. Well, it was a media event, but it wasn't, like, uh... The point wasn't to show off new games for people who might buy them. Or to celebrate existing games. It was to show off how your company was doing, like, financially to stockholders. That, that was what E3 originally was. You know, show what you were working on for, uh, stockholders. Before that was, uh, I don't think it's, I don't know if it's necessarily tied directly to E3, but, uh, famously, the big, like, Nintendo tech demo convention was, uh, the, the Space World, uh, the Expo, I guess you'd call it, in the, in the 90s, which that's where a lot of these, uh, these betas come from. The, uh, the Pokemon Space World demo, Mario 64. Doing that soon. The fan beta recreation. I'll, I'll get to it. I hope I didn't miss a Tana. I feel like that was supposed to be the third one. No, this is the third one. I remember it was on a little island on its own. There we go. Uh, speed up is okay in uh, hardcore mode emulation. Which is tremendous for, like, some really grindy stuff. I'm in the process of, like, uh, getting all of the stuff in Dragon Ball Z Budokai 1, which is an extremely grindy process. Not as grindy as 2. 2 is gonna be even worse. But uh, I did do it on the original PS2, and I don't know how I did it. Because, boy, I really feel like I need to speed up to, like... It's just loading and reloading a shop over and over and over again, is what it is, to buy all the things. And it's super tedious, even with speed up. I don't know how I did it without... All right, 10 out of 32 levels. Oh, hold on. I said I was going to try to refresh the uh, the thing. Let's see if it'll load now. All right. No gem path on this one. Did we get it? We got it. Load! Damn it! You know what I'm gonna do? Nah, never mind. I was gonna put another page behind it, because the, like, the user profile page loads more readily than the game pages do. I don't know why the game, the game pages on Retro Achievements have issue. But that would take too long. I don't want to do that. Sorry. 
I was I was looking at the list again. What what's my but what do I what do I have to do for Ripperoo? Under forty seconds. Let's go for it. Let's see if we can do it. Fortunately, the explosions are pretty forgiving. There we go. Just activate everything. Activate every explosion. Michael Bay it. What's, uh, Sunset Vista has a ton of crates. Maybe I should get the, uh... Maybe I should get the, like, 50 crates thing there. You know what? I'll try to get it here. That's what I'll do. Surely this level has more than 50 crates. You know what? This game is hard, but they were pretty generous with the lives. I see a lot of lives crates around here. A lot of Wumpa fruit. I don't like these lizards. I don't like these no-spin lizards. achievements for uh, Switch games via Yuzu. I've never tried Switch emulation. It, it's too new. I don't, I, I don't attempt to emulate, like, current-gen systems. Even if they're as underpowered and probably easily emulatable as the Switch. Oh, come on! Uh, it happened. That was the- it, it dropped my input for just a second there. It recovered. Why well, I gotta use BizHawk? Why can't this work on, like, better emulators? Most of the Twin Sanity achievements involve collecting all the gems in each stage. How many stages are in that game? It's not that many, is it? No! A chunk of them involve beating the whole stage without dying or taking damage. Yeah, sounds about right. That box was in a risky position. It had to be dealt with. I know it's weird that I'm avoiding boxes, I just- I want that, like, that 50 boxes achievement. For which I also have to not die, so. This level's annoying, but it, it's- it's better to do it on- on this than Sunset Vista, because I know both these levels have, like, a ton of boxes. Alright, 
Did I do it? Did we miss at least 50? Oh, that- what? There's that few boxes? Ah, oh, we did all that for nothing. I thought for sure there'd be over 50 boxes on that level. <sighs> Alright. Get the normal gem. There's an achievement called Entropy's Nemesis that expects you to 100% the, the game in under two hours. Fuck that. I hate those achievements. I hate the ones that are like, hey, do this all in one sitting. The ones that, like, expect you to play the game multiple times. Donkey Kong Country has, has one of those. Which is like, you know... Beat the whole game in under such and such time. Speedrun achievements. Which are fine for, like, individual levels. Don't make me do the whole game in one sitting beginning to end. What kind of- what kind of idiot does an entire game in one sitting beginning to end? That's fucking stupid. What an idiot that person would be. At least the Donkey Kong one, though, is just, like, getting through every level, not 100%ing the game. Come on, what is that? That that achievement might be the deciding factor in me not attempting, uh, in, in not attempting Twin Sanity, because that sounds stupid. That would be so annoying to have every achievement except one, because there's like one bullshit achievement on the list. I don't remember if I mentioned this at the start of the stream, but like the worst set that I found thus far is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Most of the achievements are fine. Then there's a couple that have like ludicrously hard score challenges. I could probably do them with enough attempts. They wouldn't be fun. And then there's one single achievement that is like pro speedrunner shit. And everyone in the comments agrees that it's just totally undoable. I hope it I hope it gets addressed by the site staff because there are cases where like an achievement that is obviously bullshit is removed from the list. Boy, that'd be great if that happens. And they have, like, uh, they have, the, the site has optional, like, subsets for people who want to play, like, insane Kaizo shit. So it's not like that, like, those people are high and dry. Oh, what was that? I was expected to bounce on the top one. Thankfully, bonuses are not counted towards the level crate total in this game. What do I get from the... What do I get from the embryo challenges? They're just lives, aren't they? Wait, are they counted towards the total? No, they're not. So the embryo challenges are totally optional. They're just for lives, is all. The uh, Tana bonus rooms are save points, and the Cortex ones are keys. They unlock levels, so they're required for completion. It's a 
bad lizard. I don't like that lizard. These lizards are in bad spots. All right, Tana. <gasps> Why it fell? That's okay. Strictly speaking, Tana is not like required either. They're just save points, and I'm doing this in one session, so I don't need save points. You know, just in case I should run out of my 65 lives, I might need to reload my save. That'd be pretty tragic, huh? Like I said, I get... How many people get game overs in this game? Probably most of them, right? Like, is this... This isn't normal to have this many lives? There's enough lives and fruit around these levels that... Like, even people who say the game is impossibly hard. Do they run out of lives? Or do they just... Are they tired of making all these attempts, even though they've never gotten a game over? Like, what, what's hard in this context? It's just, it's not, not gonna load anymore. Disappointing. I could use, like, Google Chrome, but I don't think that'd be any better. Give me a second to try. Let me load up the page on Google Chrome. Well, no, it's not, it's not loading. Is the whole site just down? It won't even load my profile. What a time for that to happen. I get the feeling the site's servers aren't the best. I get the feeling it gets overloaded easily. That's a shame. Uh, let's see. What was this level called? This was the, the temple level. But I think Jaws of Darkness is one of the ones that has a key on it. It's not this one. Or was this Jaws of Darkness? No, that's an, that's an Island 3 level. the input did, did you see that it like it interrupted crashes jump he just kind of he lost a little momentum in the middle of the jump there that's bizhawk What other games have I looked up? Uh, I looked up some when Jack was playing Tomb Raider during those streams recently. Which, Tomb Raider on PS1 had achievements. Even some obscure games like uh, Captain Skyhawk on the NES had some. It's interesting to see what people have bothered and uh, what people haven't. Uh, the, the, the CDI games have entries on the site, but no one has made achievements for them. And the comment section is just full of people quoting the meme lines. That's it, that's the whole comment section. Why am I doing this? I don't need lives.
This feels a lot easier than the ruin levels in Crash 2. I don't know why. What have we got? Crash 2 is definitely the easiest of the three original games. But, uh... I don't know, those ruins always felt, like, intimidating. Mo mostly the, like, the I think the second one, Ruination. Because it was full of nitros, and it had those weird, like, uh, slippy, slidey, spinning platforms. They were easy to fall off of. No belly flop. Doesn't exist yet. No, there's effectively no circle button in this game. Circle just spins. Nothing. I've been uh, I've been binging One Piece lately, which I don't know why. It's the only anime I really do that with. But it's reminding me that it's actually it's a very well written show. It's just killed because it the, the pacing, specifically the pacing of the anime is just slow, so slow and padded. Like the old jokes people make about Dragon Ball Z. Just them screaming at each other full, for a full episode, nothing happens. Unfortunately, that's kind of One Piece. I'm just gonna keep trying. I guess I could move the screen to the center, but it'd be weird to do that now after, a, like, half the stream. Alright, here we go. Eesh, these levels are kind of infamous. A lot of people didn't like these levels. It's kind of a shame Jack isn't around for any of the crash streams, but, uh, you know, this game's gonna be like, I don't know, four hours, five hours. I get why he wouldn't want to be around the whole time. Even though each Tomb Raider stream is proving to be about that long. Crash doesn't walk over smoothly like Mario does. Every time he, he runs over a, a two planks, I worry that he's going to fall. I like how they don't even bother to have any kind of, like, implied explanation as to how these, these warthogs are just running on air. They're fine. They're magical. They're magical warthogs. Quite a blast radius on the TNT in this game. It's three blocks. Alright, 14 levels done. I may have, I probably mentioned this in older streams. The save system in this game is very strange. 
and that they have save points, but the save points don't actually have anything to do with your specific file. Every Tana save point just saves whatever level that you're up to, or the level is on specifically. So now that I've gotten this Tana bonus, my save file says that I have unlocked up to this level. So the save files save different things. I, I don't think that, uh, like, if I got a gem and I didn't save, I don't think Tana would save the gem. Tana only saves levels, and gem saves only save gems. It's very strange. I want to emphasize, like, how early in the PS1 this was, though. The first Spyro game was not until Crash 3. It's also really easy to overlook just like how revolutionary this was at the time. Crash Bandicoot 1. Uh, if you haven't watched it, you should check out the uh, Boundary Break episode on this game, this series. Because uh, Naughty Dog kind of took the PS1 and made it their bitch. It's really incredible when you find when you see like how this compared to other games of the time and how they got everything looking this good and smooth. I know this could zoomer saying this is good and smooth. It is for the time. Ah. This hawk lag. Uh it's actually it's the fact that this game has this kind of rail-based level system. Not rail-based, but like it, the, the levels load such that only exactly what is on screen is loaded at a time, given your uh, forward or backward position in the level. And they were uh, very, very conservative with not having unnecessary, like, uh, sides showing, or rendered. It's hard to explain, but this was very impressive technology for the PS1. I still need that, uh, I, I need that 50 crates level. Let me look this up. Number of crates in each crash one level. Maybe there's maybe someone's got a list. <laughs> so someone in the in the cra in the insane trilogy Steam community saying, "No way, people! Hundred percent, this is a kid. Oh, you sweet summer child! You you're playing the easy version." Crash 4 list. This isn't helpful. No, I don't think anyone has made one. Darn. Man, it'd be really convenient right now. Surely Sunset Vista. Sunset Vista is a huge level. Surely this level has more than 50 crates on it. What's it even- it's holding on nothing. They, they didn't even think about where they put that bat. They just said, fuck it. I'm not even gonna get checkpoints. I'm, I'm gonna get as few crates as possible. <gasps> Bishawk! Hate it. I hate that it does that. I hate that I have to use this emulator. over. I'm not taking that.
you know, now I gotta be quiet. Now I gotta focus for the stupid, uh, this stupid no crates challenge that I've embarked on. There's a little depth. Not a whole lot. Just enough to walk around the crates. Just go slow and safe. What if I try this? What level in Crash 1 has the most crates? Level is Jaws of Darkness. Okay. Well, you know what? We have an answer then. Let, let's try to get that, that particular achievement on Jaws of Darkness. If that level has so many crates, that'll be a good level to do it on. I remember this level sucking. I remember this level being very long and difficult. I guess the series was very suited to being turned into a 2D platformer on handheld. Unlike some other series. But, uh, man, I just wish they'd gotten the, like, controls right. What are some of the things that they attempted to make uh, 2D on handheld? Tony Hawk, which I always thought was super weird. There were a 2D, like, side view Tony Hawk games on, like, Game Boy Color. Mentioned that there was a, uh, there's a Game Boy Color Tomb Raider? Which, that looked strange. It looked very over-animated. I compared it on stream to Lester the Unlikely. This is, this is horribly lined up. Is it ever going to change? Man! <sighs> Sucked. That was shit. Let me up. I wonder if I'd listen to Devo. If I could, like, pick out songs that sound like Crash Bandicoot. Or Rugrats. I've mentioned this before, but the uh, Mark Mothersbaugh, the main composer for these games was also like the the lead in Devo the band and he also did the theme song to Rugrats That was some dangerous timing to attempt I'm glad it worked out
and then the fruit bats became fruit. I wonder what kind of temple this could conceivably be. I'm pretty sure it's just like Crash Bandicoot. I don't know if there are any architectural ties to any like real tribes. I'm too dumb to know that. It's supposed to be like Australian, so... I guess it should be Aboriginal, but I, I'm gonna guess this is not what, like, aboriginal structures look like. Then again, what do I know? I guess, like, the, the tribal folk in these games are just kind of vague island tribal communities. What have we got? With the, like, the, the bowl cut hairstyle, I, I guess they're supposed to be, like, vaguely Incan. Even though that makes no sense for Australia. Ah! The depth got me. Oh, that sucks. Well, I'll still get the I'll still get the cortex heads at the very least. That means I'm going to have to do this level again, though. Are there any boxes back here? I don't think there are. There are. Okay. You can hear it. You can hear the Devo. I, I could have to do this again, too, if I don't get this right the first time. Why did you do it then, Bizhawk? I hate it. Bizhawk, you so ugly. I hate you so much, Bizhawk. But that pussy game. Old memes. That is one nice thing about the bonuses in these games, even though I only get one attempt at them. I don't actually need to get all the crates. I just need to get to the end. I, I kind of, I end up getting all the crates anyway, because it's like a force of habit, but... Alright, 99 lives. Sixteen levels, we're halfway there. Hour 20 so far. Granted, the levels are going to get harder, and we still have to, uh... We have to do, like, the gem shit. I can't even load the page to look at the achievements on my end anymore. It's, the site just decided to go down, just as I started this stream. Oh, wait, it's loading something. Is there anything back here? I'm gonna guess no. No, I cannot go back here. I remember this game pretty well. I don't remember it flawlessly. I'm a Crash Bandicoot enthusiast, but not a Crash Bandicoot speedrunner. Alright, so I got all the crates, but unfortunately, I died, so. You know what that means? We gotta go back!
thankfully the the achievements still proc even when the site is down so that's generally not a concern it's just viewing the front end of the site is where it often just craps itself Oh, it loaded something. I can't see what it's loaded. It's just some kind of error, looks like. Darian, my ob screen is small. What does that say? That's just a mask. That's not any boxes in there. Code of conduct? What? Did it say I violated code of conduct? What did I do? I didn't do nothing bad. I was worried for a second. I was like, did I make a comment that, like, pissed off the staff or something? Oh Just the invincibility is so useless on so many of the levels in this game. Oh, I have to spin the mother bats. I can't, like, invincibility them. There's, like, so many of the death threats on the hard levels are just, like, instant death. Mostly bottomless pits and water and things. invisibility. It's not totally pointless, but... Right, that's Cortex Head 1. Oh no, it worked that time. Why did I have to spin the other bat? That was weird. don't trust the weird interactions that invincibility has with the, uh, with boxes on small platforms. It always worries me. All right. Cortex number three. Attempt two.
Hopefully this time, I won't get any sudden cutouts. Boy, that suck. Yeah! Okay, that was that wasn't the cutout. That was just me. I wasn't expecting two crates to break. Man, I gotta do this level again. Not for uh, not for the gem. I should still I can still get the gem on this attempt, but I gotta get I gotta get the key. I gotta get the cortex key. I hope the, I hope like the actual achievement servers are still working. I haven't really been paying attention. Have we been getting the sound? Boy, it'd be really unfortunate if I did this, if I did this whole stream for the sake of getting achievements and I stopped getting achievements. I did have one uh, PS2 emulator update break them, so I had to like uh, I had to, I had to re-enable them manually. That kind of sucked, but I didn't lose too much progress from it. All right, that should be everything. Please. It's not even a colored gem. That's a white gem. Okay, yeah, I still got the text, so they're still happening. Still got to get the key. I don't have to get every box now, so that'll go. F now that'll make it go faster. But uh, man. I'm so tired of this stupid level. This might be my least favorite level in the game. Well, no, never mind. The lab exists. Actually, you know what? No, the lab only sucked because of, uh, because of the relic. I think the lab will be fine for the purposes of, uh, just what we're doing. For the purposes of being a normal level, the lab is fine. It's just, it's just the relic. Also, probably obvious by now, but uh, another one of the differences that was introduced in Crash 2 was uh, crystals. Crystals do not yet exist. Crash 1 is just getting through the levels. kind of strange how uh, gems, the optional collectibles, predate uh, crystals, the mandatory collectibles in Crash Bandicoot. I mentioned that I 100%ed uh, Ocarina Time. Haven't done Majora yet. Probably do that soon. And, uh, probably start Spyro. Off stream. I'm, I'm not streaming all these things. I'm just thinking about games that I would like to play again, just for fun. Again, I'm, I'm restreaming this one mostly because the original Crash streams were delisted. I'm, I'm still getting every box anyway, out of habit. I don't need to do that. I know where the Cortex ones are. Well, the first and the third one, anyway. I forgot where the second one is. It's really late into the level. Which is very annoying. I'm sure they knew it would be. I think I actually understood what the keys did when I was a kid. 
I just, I, I just, I think I just failed to notice the new levels that opened after I had the key. Can I die and respawn the masks? Or the, the, the cortex heads, rather. If I fail this. I don't think that will work. Oh, the second one was just, like, on top of the things. Second one's just, like, up here. I also, I can't avoid that checkpoint because it's positioned on such a tiny platform, so I guess it's a moot point. Alright, number three is in there. This is the time. We're never gonna have to come back to this level again. This is it. We're gonna do it, and Bizhawk is definitely not gonna steal this away from me. Oh, it stuttered for a second. <sighs> Get out of here, dick. Alright, Island 2 done. For now. We'll have to come back once we have the colored gems and everything. But, uh... I wish I'd at least had, like, an overlay planned. So that I could have something on the left side of the screen. I did not foresee us having this much issue with, uh... With the Retro Achievements website. I can put up the Dragon Ball overlay. How about that? We can have an Uzuru there. Apparently... Sorry, I'm focusing now. I think there's an achievement for beating Koala Kong without jumping. I think that's the, the Koala Kong challenge mode achievement. Hopefully that doesn't count. Yeah, I set it to try and reload. It's going to be a second. didn't proc. I think I have to not jump and also not take any hits. 
Oh, that one was just for beating Qualicom. I'm not going to worry about it until I can load the page and look at it to confirm. I'll, I'm just going to move on. Boy, the future levels, or not the future, the laboratory levels in this game... They look so scummy compared to later, like, Cortex levels. It's all, like, rusted metal. It looks like Fallout. The later Cortex levels all look like, uh, like, clean, shiny space technology. This is just, like, crust. Crust and rust. Oh, we gotta do, uh... What have we, got? we gotta do, what's that level? Cortex power. That's gonna suck. Oh, uh, what else was I saying? Apparently, Ultimate Battle 22 can, like, carry over characters that you build to the GT game, Final Bout. But there's only, like, four characters from Ultimate Battle 22 in Final Bout. So it makes it all kind of a pointless feature. Like, you can only really carry over, like, your Goku or your Frieza or something. I also saw someone online claim that uh, Final Bout Final Bout is a way better game than Ultimate Battle 22, which is a bold claim. They're both pretty terrible. I'm not, I'm not gonna like die in a hill defending either one, but way better? Really? I, I, I truly do not need any more lives at this point. Any more lives that I get will not count. I don't think there's even an achievement for 99 lives. It's so easy in this game. For a comparison, in the, in the handheld game, in Huge Adventure, I finished the game, I got all the crystals and gems, and I never reached 60 lives. I got the achievement for having a stockpile of 30 lives in that game. I didn't get 60, I didn't get 90. So I'm actually going to have to gr find a... I'm gonna have to find a level like Grind Lives in that game. For those achievements. Do I have any crash overlays? I'm sorry, I keep pausing. I want to take just a second to check that. I have, a, I have a bunch of overlays, like, built up, just so I have something. I have the Crash GBA. Is that my only Crash overlay? The Game Boy Advance? Really? Well, it's something, I guess. Okay. It's a bit weird. Is that too weird? I don't think this is in later Crash games. The fact that they, like, pitch up the bounce sound for every consecutive bounce. You hear that? Why am I doing- I don't need lives, and these boxes don't count. Why am I doing this?
Really weird sounding music track for this level, for these levels. I don't even call that uh, that like intro style. It has that like lo-fi radio sound, like the like the portal radio. But I think it's supposed to sound like like steam vents or something. I don't- I don't fully understand what it's trying to convey with that sound. Oh Are we past the points of levels that need, like, colored gems? Because I don't remember. I remember there's that one in the castle that has, like, the, the path that goes up. That's another annoying level. Because I think you have to... That's one of the dark levels. And you have to, like, backtrack to that path. You have to backtrack to that path after doing the main level in order to get all the boxes. I want to say that Cortex and that and Cortex Power are the most annoying gem levels in this game. Sunset Vista was pretty bad, mostly because it's just long and difficult. Hello, Illatox. I decided to replay this game because my old stream of it was shit, and because I wanted to get achievements, and now that I am doing so, the achievements website has decided to go down. So that's fun. How, how are you today? I want those. I have no need for the lives, but the, the, the wood. The precious wood. Yeah, give me those boxes. I like how the baseline achievement in Crash 1... Like, you, you need to do all this to get gems is considered, like, hot shit in Crash 4. It's got its own, like, fancy collectible, the insane relics. For getting all the boxes without dying. Here we go. Oh boy. Oh boy. This level. I have to remember what route I'm supposed to take for this shit. Let's not go this way first. Stupid jump. That's a stupid jump. I don't like that jump. Is that a gem? Oh, I need the blue gem to do this anyway. Alright, well, that makes it easier. That wasn't my plan. I like the, uh, the incredible anachronism of this game. You've got, like, ancient Incan temples. You've got Cortex's lab. 
which is like Victorian Frankenstein era. You've got his, uh, his like toxic industrial levels, which have this weird like 1950s fallout motif. And to guard them all, he's he's employed prohibition era gangsters. No, come back. I'm glad there's no, like, stupid achievement. Like, beat the whole game without losing a life. I'm pretty sure Rayman has that. I think that's one of the Rayman achievements. And that's just awful. No, it's beat the whole game without getting a game over. Which is better, but still awful. Or without using con uh, uh, continue. I think I might still eventually go for it, but it'll it'll take a lot of resetting and bullshitting. Come on. There we go. Ugh, this level sucks, but at least I can put it off for a little while. That sounds terrible. I would never. What's your? What are some of your favorite uh, console games, Elatox? Like old games. I'm curious if they're on retro achievements. Wait, I, never mind. Actually, I can't look right now because the fucking site is down. Cortex. Cortex just watched. This music has that, like, uh... Those shitty 90s synth instruments. Like you'd hear in 90s hip-hop. Or, uh... Or 90s J-pop had a lot of that. Sonic CD was, uh, the Sonic CD soundtrack was based on that era of J-pop. Which was, uh, it was present in some of the later, like, Ursa Yatsura stuff. Uh, Yu Yu Hakusho had kind of that style to its openings and endings. Can you earn achievements when the site is down? I can! Uh, I... So far, I've not had any issue getting achievements even when the site is down, but I, the site itself, like the front end, seems to have a lot of, like, server issues. I always have a lot of trouble viewing the, uh, the game pages and things. Which is unfortunate. I wanted to have them on the left side of the screen instead of that little, like, chunk of Game Boy Crash, but, uh, nothing I can do about it. If the site does, like, fix its shit during the course of the stream, then I'll put them back up. I only had Nintendo consoles as a kid. Do those count? They do! They have uh, achievements for Nintendo consoles. I played a little bit of uh, Mario 1. See, so, yes, Super Mario Bros. on the NES has achievements now. And 100% uh, at Ocarina of Time recently. This is stupid. This right here. I should be able to walk off and stand on that. I can't. It's just death. I fall right on through.
Oh, wait. It loaded. Let me see if I can load it on OBS now. Does it say my latest achievements are? I guess it doesn't say my latest ones, but uh, yeah, it'll show them at least. Have I not reached the end of a... No, I reached the end of an embryo. Round? I don't have the achievement for that for some reason. Curious about Snowboard Kids 2. I'm not familiar, but uh, there have been obscure games from my childhood that have achievement sets, so who knows. Uh, what was it on? They don't have a... They don't have GameCube, and I don't think they have Wii. Well, somehow I survived that. Whatever. I won't question it. GameCube would be nice, especially since Dolphin is such a nice emulator. It's a shame that it doesn't have uh, achievement support yet. Yeah, maybe it'll happen. The uh, N64 supports it, so there are achievements for Smash 64, but not any of the other Smash games. What? Ah! I'm mad. There wasn't even anything electric there. Why did that shock me? I, granted, I went a little far left, but... Couldn't that just be a wall? Oh, it, 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 nope. There's a... There's nothing electric over there. Man, that was stupid. Now I got to do it again cuz I got to get the get to get the gem. There weren't any colored gems, so I should, in theory, be able to do this level. Man. It was right at the end, too. Uh, yes, the site's achievements are integrated into the emulators. The PS2 one is how I discovered it. It's nice in that it's like, uh, it's like fully integrated such that it looks like on Steam or PS3. It has like a little pop-up with a name and icon and everything. Bizhawk doesn't have that. Bizhawk is what I'm using. It plays uh, all, uh, all of the other games, the non-PS2 ones. And it just has a little text prompt that appears. It's not as cool, but it works. And it updates everything on the site. People complain about the, uh, the, like, the depth in this game, the depth perception, but... You always have the shadow beneath you, so I don't, th I don't think it's too bad! I'm fine. Sorry. We're good. No need to panic. Hello, Iker Gomez. Crash 4 adds like a little, uh, like a big obvious 
red crosshair below you, I think. This is fine. I, I can see how some people would find it useful. I, I don't think it's particularly necessary. Man. It's back to giving server a server errors. It's not going to load again. I gotta get it though. We're doing hundred percent. What what? Uh, in Crash Bandicoot One, you have to get to the end of a level without dying and also get all the boxes for the gems. So if I die, that's it. I gotta start over. Why did that happen, though? Uh, I, I guess I pressed left. I don't know why I pressed left. Okay, that one was Bizhawk eating my inputs. That's been happening on rare occasion, and I don't like it. I wish I didn't have to use this emulator. I think this also works with RetroArch, but uh, I don't like RetroArch. It's a cool idea. It's supposed to, like, uh, the idea is that it, like, puts all your emulators in one place. In, like, a, uh, PSN-type menu. I just found it to be a pain to set up. Maybe I'll try it again someday. Maybe I'll come to the conclusion that it's actually the best version of an emulator for uh, cases like this. And I'll regret having done this stream on BizHawk. That's usually how it goes. I only find out about the best way to do something after it's done. I should be able to jump down there. I can clearly see a landing spot. Nope, can't do it. I'll fall. What have I got? This is a slightly frustratingly structured level. Sorry. No hablo espanol. Okay. We're gonna do it. This is the run. This is the time. But Mario 1 has a lot of, uh... A lot of very tricky and a lot of like very different like conditional achievements while going through the games. I'm gonna have to approach it like Spelunky like Spelunky. Where each time I play the game is like a run. Okay. Now I'm not gonna walk off into the apparently electric sides. That should be all of them. That should be everything.
There we go. Okay, give me a colored gem. I can use a, I can, give me another colored one. Yeah. Again, why am I getting fruit? I don't need lives. I'm just wasting time. For the longest time, I thought Wumpa fruit were a real thing. Like, it was just some fruit from some part of the world that I'd never seen at the grocery store. They're like an exotic fruit, like a star fruit or papaya. Imagine my disappointment when I learned that I could never really eat a Wumpa fruit. It was a sad day. I feel like I recall the time trial on this level. Benefiting from getting all three masks. I think this was a level that had three masks on it that you could get. Ah! I hate trying to t trying to find the right spot for those because I never do. I always fail. Coming. I know it's coming. Depth perception. Look, it's it, I, I'm fine most other times, but I don't know. The barrels are hard. Okay. Hello, Pamela Anderson Bandicoot. They're playing the Insane Trilogy. How, how far are you, Eker? 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 I'm sorry, I don't know how to say... I'll, I'll call you Gomez. I know how to say Gomez. All right, never have to go to that level again. Is this another colored one? Yeah, they bunched them up for some reason here at the end of the game. All right, pinstripe. I think this one... There's an achievement for beating him before he, like, jumps up three times? Ah. Wow, I'm bad at this. You know what's funny? On the, uh, on the PS1. I thought this chair on the right was a giant slab of Flintstones meat. Because it looks like the shape of the meat that Fred Flintstone gets on his car. And because it's the PS1, the textures are shitty enough that it looks like meat. The text popped up. I think I failed. I don't know what it said, though. Maybe 
maybe there's a way that I can beat him before he uh, before he gets the chance to jump up there. Ah, really? Thanks. I got pity masks. Let me get two hits in. Yeah, I can. Can I just keep him here? No, I only get two. Maybe he's, like, vulnerable right after he stops shooting. But that's gotta be tight as hell if that's true. I don't feel like we're gonna get every single achievement during this stream. I don't know if that's going to happen, especially if I can't load the site and look at the achievements. Do you like Crash 1? Yes, I like Crash 1. 2 is my favorite, then 1, and then 3. I like 3, but not as much as the other 2. You like that? You like that bullshit? if I need a colored gem for this level or not. Why can't he walk over that gap? He can walk over all the other ones. Okay. So he can he can go over a one tile gap for the falling planks, but not the regular planks. I don't know why. I don't remember how hard it is to walk on the, uh... How hard is it to walk on these? I felt like I remembered it being easier in the original than that. Like, they, they made it harder in Insane Trilogy. I don't remember for sure, though. Yeah, I saw Gomez. Your favorite is Crash 3. I like platforming. And Crash 3 had a lot of, uh, like, non-platforming levels. It had under a lot of uh, underwater levels and vehicle levels. I wasn't crazy about those. No! Ah! Uh! Screw it. I'll go to the end if I know that there's not a, uh, a colored gem platform on this level. Then I'll go back. Having to do all these in one attempt is pretty nasty. Oh. 
One tip you reacts. I'm sorry. I don't trust crash. No, I don't trust crash. Anytime there are these, like, this plain wooden ones anymore. We're good. We're fine. I'm good. Look, I get two lives just for getting to the end anyway. I'll try to load up my profile. That usually loads more reliably than the game pages. See, once I've died once, nothing matters anymore. I might as well just keep doing it. Have a little death before breakfast. I mean, why not? Can't get the gem anymore. Alright, well, there were no colored gems platforms, so... That means that we can get the gem on this level now. Which means that we should, because I don't remember if it's a colored gem. Boy, that'd be, uh, that'd be something. If they had three of them in a row like that. Gomez, do you watch Dragon Ball? Just curious because I know it's very, very big in uh, Central America. Remember the uh, the Funimation, the English Vegeta, Chris Sabat made a tweet some time ago that he had met the first dub Vegeta, Ocean dub, and also the Spanish dub Vegeta. So there were three Vegetas in a tweet together. I've never heard the Spanish Vegeta. I wonder if he does the same kind of voice as the other Vegetas. Because that's not at all what he sounds like in Japanese. Pretty much every character in Japanese sounds extremely different and, in my opinion, extremely unfitting in Japanese. You can dead. No, you can't. In the Insane Trilogy, you can die. In this game, you cannot. In the original game, you have to uh, get to the end without dying and with every crate in order to get the gem. They changed that in Ensane Trilogy. So, Ensane is easier. Ah!
I could move on for now, but I have to do this eventually, so might as well. There are uh, no time trials in the original game, though. There's no relics, so I don't have to worry about those. I don't like these turtle jumps. These are the worst part of this level. Because I have to jump on them, and then I have to get off. I have to, like, stop, back up, and get momentum for the jump. The turtles are very annoying. I wish I could get the full bounce height just for bouncing on the enemies. However, I cannot. If there's a jump I can make without the turtles, that's great. I don't- I won't use the turtles. Turtles suck. Bizhawk, please? Ugh. Why is he doing it so much? You saw that. I just- I, I lost momentum and I just fell straight down. These ones are fine. These ones are already pre-shelled. Like, nice pre-shelled peanuts. Okay. I probably could have tried to walk on the side. I didn't really make the attempt. Again, you guys can't see the achievement pop up because it's a little little bit of text at the section of the screen that I have cut off, but you can hear them. All right, slippery climb. Thankfully, another thing we don't have to worry about in this this version of the game is uh is Stormy Ascent, the level that was cut for being too hard. Technically, it's still in the game. I could like uh, I could use an action replay or something to play it. Wouldn't benefit me any. Gomez, have you played the secret level? The bonus level, Stormy Ascent. Benefit the ego? Yeah, I'm good. This is gonna be like a four-hour stream. I, I don't need the extra ego. I'd rather have the time of my life. Imagine that were an achievement. Maybe it's in one of the subsets. They have like a... You can enable bonus sets of achievements for, like, Kaizo stuff or a, whatever extra challenge you want to go for. Uh, the Pokemon... I saw Pokemon Red has a Nuzlocke subset. So you can enable achievements specifically for a Nuzlocke run. Gomez, what is your question?
This level looks like a bitrate killer. I'll bet this probably doesn't look great on stream with all the rain everywhere. It is a cool looking level for the PS1. Like this, this looks really nice for PS1 era graphics, early PS1 era graphics. Funny? I, have you been joking? I, I, I'm sorry, Gomez. I haven't fully understood everything you've said because of the language difference. It's just Jafar, disguised as the old man in Aladdin, reaching out from a cell. Yeah, that's fine. I didn't need that. Ah! Oh I slipped. It was wet. It was moist. Well, I'm gonna have to do this again. Can I recover? I can. Like, you'd think they're hazards, but those, like, the spikes around the level are actually nice that they're there because they'll sometimes save you. The alternative is instant fall death. Like so. Or not. I'm really bad at this spot for some reason. Bonus is a rock. A mythical bird? Do you play Insane Trilogy? I have played Insane Trilogy. I have uh, streams on the YouTube channel from when I played them. I also have, have streams of the original PS1 games as well. I've streamed ed pretty much every single Crash game. I have streamed. Oh, you know what I didn't do? Let's take a break from Slippery Climb for just a moment. What is your YouTube channel? Uh, Fourth Seat Studios. It is, uh... It is the one that you are watching on right now. It's the same channel. We keep all of our streams archived there. Ah. <laughs> this level, there's no point, like, uh, just getting to the end of, because the only thing here this is totally optional. The only thing here is a gem. I like that we got another hog level, though. I think there is, uh... I think there is two copies of every type of level in this game. Except for Slippery Climb, because the other one was Stormy Ascent, and that was cut. What 
is the other version of Cortex Power? Is it, I guess, the lab? Yeah, I, guess, I guess that checks out. Those two are both kind of unique, though. Thank you for the subscribe, by the way, Gomez. What am I... Okay, I have to hold the jump button. I, I, I forgot that completely. Because I was thinking, well, there's no run in this one. They don't introduce that until the polar bears. It's just move left and right and jump, but uh, there's all you can also choose to uh, hold on the drums to jump higher or not. If this was a Devo song, I wonder what it would be about. This would be a goofy Devo song, and I kind of want to hear it with lyrics now. Missed one. Can't miss him. You moving the oh, you can hear my uh, you can hear my joystick. Actually, using the uh, the D pad. My Insane Trilogy uh, Crash 1 streams were plagued by uh, some kind of audio issue. I don't remember exactly what it was, but I remember I didn't resolve it until the final stream, uh, Stormy Ascent, which is why that's the only one with a highlights video. I do remember during that stream, Crash Bandicoot fused with a drum. So that was something that happened. Yes, this game is for PlayStation 1. Yeah, I fell off uh, I fell off the pig and Crash just landed inside of a drum. And uh, it didn't reset. He just sat there and stayed there and that was it. The game kind of soft locked. It's in one of the uh, it's in one of the uh, the Twitch clip compilations. Why is that not breaking? I know this is asking a lot of an early PS1 game. Boy, I wish I could just enable like a like an I'm doing gems mode. So that it would remove all checkpoints and always start me from the beginning of the level. Just so I don't have to go back to the map over and over again. That would be wonderful. Why does this level even have checkpoints? Does it have checkpoints? Because if you're not going to get the gem, then there's no point doing this level at all. It doesn't get you any progress. Yeah, it does have checkpoints. Why does this level have checkpoints? What were they thinking? Ah, Bizhawk! The rock run. Oh, the boulder level. I I could I could do that. I don't remember if I have the the gem for it or not. You need a colored gem. To get all the boxes on it. 
I'm here, so yeah, I, I can try it after this level. This is a loud pig. This pig is not happy to be ridden. This pig is very clearly not okay with this. This pig is going to be traumatized for the rest of his porky life. Ah! We're almost there. We're going to do it. Not half a hog, the whole hog. Look at that stupid grin. He knows what he's doing. There's not a lot that you can that they can do to make these levels especially difficult. They just kind of keep putting the crates at the far left and the far right. That's the extent of it. <laughs> okay. Did we make it? Are we good? Not quite. Ooh, there we go. Okay. There we go. All right, rock level. This is the harder one. I think I already completed the first one. I hope I have the right gem for this. Boy, these levels are awful in the in the Game Boy Advance game. You're running from a Yeti, but because it's on Game Boy Advance, sprites just kind of pop in, and you don't have time to react to what's coming your way at all. Alright, I might have rushed a little bit there. Probably should have been a little more careful around the TNT. These levels are fine. The worst is like the, the platforms that move left and right, but uh, Crash has enough air control that you can just kind of aim for the center and then react to where the platform is midair. So it's doable. Every, everything in this level is reactable. As a Smash player would say. Actually, I just stay in the middle. I don't even need to like move left and right. I can just land in the middle of every one of those. Okay, not these ones. These ones. I have to aim! Bizhawk, please! Come on. 
There we go. Crash with less aerial control would be a very different and much worse game. Like, I can also control how long I stay in the air by how long I hold the button, so... It's not immediately obvious unless you're holding the controller in your hands, but Crash is like a very, very tight platforming game. Nope, I don't have the purple gem, so I can't do this yet. That was a waste of time. Nope, I missed that many boxes. A lot. A lot of boxes. Yes, I, I did die once. That That is true. I was kind of rushing. And I, and I hit the TNT. You seem very excited about the fact that I died once. Alright, slipper to climb, gotta do this. Have to. There's a gun to my head. I have no choice but to get the gem on slippery climb. Is Hawk? Are we good? Are we chill? I'd like to load this site and make sure that I do or don't have the achievement for the embryo. Because I swear I got to the end of one. So it's weird that it didn't give it to me. Okay, see you later, Gomez. Crash kind of gets dismissed these days. I wonder how Crash 4 did uh, financially. Because it seems like... I, I get the impression that the only people playing Crash Bandicoot games are the people who grew up on Crash Bandicoot games. That's not entirely true. Insane Trilogy probably did well enough to uh, reach an audience. I don't know how many people went on to uh, buy Crash 4 after that considering that it was, like, immediately regarded as ludicrously difficult. But I hear a lot of people, even people my age, who are just, uh... They just don't really see anything unique about Crash games, and they just think it's like Mario, but stupidly difficult. Which, I don't know, maybe a little biased, but I don't think it's that. I don't even know what I was doing there. I think the fact that this has, like, uh, fewer moves 
than something like Mario 64 makes it more of a pure platformer. You know, Mario's impure. You know what I mean, though. Like, it, it's a more classic test of skill than, uh... And Mario's still a test of skill. It, Mario 64 has some degree of challenge to it, but... It's testing different skills. It's testing more, like, uh... I don't know, wall jumping, unique mechanics, rather than just pure... This is more along the lines of the original Mario games. You know, to some degree, from limitations comes creativity. I appreciate that Crash just has, like, very, the pretty simple basic movements. And that the games are built around that fact. Crash 4 was just a pure platforming gauntlet. And I applaud them for all of the, uh, like, the creative new implementations they came up with, the mechanics. While maintaining true to being just a platformer. Because that was my main my main complaint with Crash 3 was that a lot of the uh, a lot of the levels were not platforming levels. I've said this before. I feel like that kind of happens with third games in trilogies pretty often. Is that they get kind of a foundation for what they're going for in game one. Then they really perfect the formula in Game 2. And then Game 3, they don't really know how to follow up. So they just do a bunch of, like, mini-games and gimmicks. Happened with Spyro, too. Well, Spyro as well. Because Spyro 3 was the one that introduced all of the other characters, which are fine. But they're clearly not as, like deep and engaging as Spyro's gameplay. They're not as fleshed out. Okay, cool. That's fine. It's not a death, so that that is fine. I can I can climb back up again. Uh Sly 3, Jack and I have been talking about starting soon because we've never played that one. We are still blind to Sly 3, though I have heard it has a similar sort of situation where it adds a lot of a lot more playable characters than the previous games. And Sly 2, as far as the first two games go, I think Sly 2 perfected the formula. But we'll see. I'll keep an open mind for Sly 3. a ratchet deadlocked potentially on the list coming up which is the fourth one we streamed the first three ratchet games I cleared an Embryo level. I should get an achievement for that, unless I already got it and it just didn't refresh. Thank God these birds are so bouncy. This hot! You can see the stutter. You know exactly when it's gonna happen. It's so annoying! 
That just added like five minutes to this stream. Five to ten minutes because of that stupid stutter. Man. Well, I don't need to do- I know I don't need to do Embryo, so... I can just kill myself immediately if I get him again. I mean, if I'm going to get him again because I'm getting up a crate. No, we don't need to do Stormy Ascent. I don't need to add another hour to this playthrough. I'm good. It wouldn't be that long, but it would be unnecessary. Unnecessary, like making me go back to the map screen again, even though I'm still starting from the start of the level. Why is it happening? Why is it doing that? If it is a resources thing, I guess I could try closing Chrome, but... I'm gonna wager a guess that it's not. I'm going to venture that it's just Bizhawk. Here's an annoying achievement I'm going to have to do. If I want to uh, do all of the... Uh, if I want to do everything in Ultimate Battle 22, then I'm going to have to uh, do the the default, like the arcade mode, man, on uh, the hardest difficulty, which isn't too bad because I can like uh, I can just keep continuing and I can keep retrying every fight, but still 22 fights in a row. It's going to be tedious. Six degrees, really. I just looked at that. I have to play this so much more carefully than I would another Crash game. BECAUSE OF THE DEATH THING! <sighs> I say. At least it loads fast on emulation. Compared to original, anyway. If I die another time, then I think I'll come back to this. If I don't get it this time, then I'll come back, because I'm getting tired of this scenery. I saw enough of this type of level for a lifetime with Stormy Ascent.
Every time I hear this track, I think of the theme song for Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader. I don't remember the theme song, so I'll have to take your word for it. Does it have pizzicato? Is that why? Every time I hear this track, I think of death reels. Why? No reason. Man, that stream was what, four hours for Stormy Ascent? The entirety of the rest of Crash 1 is going to be four hours versus a single level. I like these, like, moving, spinning platforms. They're neat. Later games didn't really have the guts to do these again. When Jack came through the door midstream. Did that happen in Stormy Ascent? That happened in Crash 2, I remember that. I think the only Crash streams that Jack was around for were Crash Bash, which we did co-op, and, uh, like, one of the Crash 3 streams. I think it was the one where I was doing, uh, Hot Cocoa time trial. That, I spent a long time on that. And I think Jack was, like, feeling unwell, so he just, like, came out to hang out for a few minutes. The Crash 2 stream took 11 or 12 hours, so Jack left for work shortly after the start of it, and then he came back from work towards the end of it. Man! Uh. Alright, we're coming back to Stormy Ascent. We'll do it later. Or uh, to, to Slippery Climb. We don't need to do that. We don't need to do that now. It can wait. Doesn't this level look so much nicer? Slash S. Now, is this the one with the, uh... Is this the one with the gem? I bet it is. And more importantly, do we have said gem? This is a level that's definitely not made for time trials. Look at this. Got moving platforms you gotta wait for. Really appreciate the insane version of this level thanks to the ambient lighting. Was it more lit in insane? As that makes sense, I believe it. <laughs> okay, this is the level with the gem, and I don't have the gem yet, so I don't need to worry about it. Okay, so they put this one without... This guy was not in a box. He was just sitting out. Which would suggest that you can just go up to the, the gem path and finish the level. Man. Maybe I can. Maybe I was misremembering and I don't have to do any backtracking. Boy, that would be swell.
Okay. So let's come back to that one. We have the yellow gem. Shot in the dark. Is the site back yet? Well, my page is loaded. Will the game page load? Let's give it a try. This is terms of service. Reload. Come on. I just remember Jaws of Darkness. This is the level where we want to try to do the, uh... We want to try to get as few boxes as possible. We don't need to miss that many, because there are apparently a lot of boxes on this level, but, uh... We need to miss- we need to get to the end without dying, and we need to miss at least 50. <laughs> we are going to murder this bandicoot with boxes, that's the plan. The achievement name is Bandicoot Abuse. What have I got? doesn't seem to want to load the game page. Man, this site. I guess it's fine. We got to see what it looked like at the start of the stream, but... No point in checkpoints, since we need to get to the end of the level without dying. That's fine. Putting boxes on these tiny little platforms. So we have to get through this level without dying twice. Fortunately, we have the blue gem, so we can get, like, everything on this level. We might have to do it more times if we fail the Cortex challenge the first time. Alright, here we go. How many boxes did I miss? Oh, they don't, uh... <laughs> that's a nice touch they added in the Insane Trilogy. Where they, like, fall down and then they're just, like, fat flat on the floor if you miss too many boxes. No, I don't have the Embryo one. That's weird. Why, why didn't that proc? didn't have that originally. Yeah, I know, right? It's a nice touch. They did they did a good job with Insane uh, Trilogy. They did a good job with uh, Crash 4 and the Spyro Trilogy as well. 
I wish they'd make more games for both series. But, uh, again. I don't... I wonder how well Crash 4 did, because it was so difficult. I appreciate it. I appreciate that they tried so hard to appeal to, like, the OG Crash gamers. It worked. I loved the game. But I get why a lot of people wouldn't. It was a little nuts. what the potential plot for, like, a, a Spyro 4 would be. Would they bring back Ripto? Because they didn't in the original trilogy. That wasn't until, like, the shitty game started that they started bringing back villains like Ripto. It's especially weird that they brought him back! God damn it. Alright. I'll keep going because I need the, the Cortex heads. It's weird that they brought him back because he very clearly fell in lava in Spyro 2. But then they also reveal that he survived that in, like, the joke ending slides of Spyro 2, so... Kind of wish they didn't do that and he just fucking died. Boy, that'd be swell. What have I got? I feel like the difficulty curve from casual play to 100% is way too steep. I don't... I don't think that's necessarily a problem as long as casual play is doable. Do you think the game was too hard just for casual play? Is, I guess, the question. Because even just getting to the end of the levels, they they kind of ask for a lot for the last couple levels of that game. Although I guess there's there's like checkpoints. You you got infinite lives. I guess it's fine. Make sure I get those lives. Wouldn't want to run out of lives. I can't get the gem anymore. I'm just trying to get the Cortex heads. Man, I'm gonna have to do all this again. Uh-oh. suck if one of the Cortex heads was in one of those boxes. It's really easy to spin snakes into boxes on this level. I think this is the third one. Or is this a Tana? No, it's a Cortex. No, it's the second one. Did I miss one? There's admittedly some, uh, some questionable game design in this game. Like those invisible platforms. The stupid, invisible, like, planks on the bridge level. Those weren't great. There were a couple instances like that in uh, Crash Huge Adventure as well. In fact, there were exactly two spots where you had to jump down into a spot. What looked like a bottomless pit. Having no indication that it was not a death pit. It's just a leap of faith. Donkey Kong Country 1 required that a lot, and it's just, it's just bad game design. If you decide 100% it goes from 0 to 100. I guess? I mean, yeah, but that's kind of the case for any, like, game's 100%, isn't it? Personally, I think that's a good thing, if, if a game is, like, very accessible just to clear. 
and to play, but uh, very difficult 100%. And the question of scale is how much of this game are you capable of completing? I don't think it necessarily scales like that badly because, like, you could get half the gems in Crash 4 decently. I really did miss a Cortex head. I think Tony Hawk 4 is uh, like that, which is part of why I love it so much. It's my favorite of the uh, Tony Hawk games. It progressively teaches you the game through the campaign. And it gets progressively harder to a point that uh, it, it's very... Very easy to get into. And you can get through most or all of the game casually, but... Uh, Hawk. You're not going to get through like 100-100% the final goals unless you really, really know your stuff in that game. I think it's a good gradual scale. Although for something like Crash where like the appeal is collecting everything and seeing that full like X out of X number I get why it would be frustrating to only be, like, capable of getting two-thirds of the gem or something. Two-thirds of the gems. I was about to talk about Spelunky 2, but that's really not a comparison because that game is like crazy hard even if you're just playing casually. To some degree. It gets easier with multiple players. Nope, he just... If you already have invincibility and you're standing on another mask, he just, he just sparkles. Unless... okay. So, unless there's another mask already on the screen, then a th a another one won't spawn. Interesting. Two standing masks cannot exist simultaneously. Did I really forget where the third cortex head is? Maybe it was in that pile that the, the snake destroyed. out of time commitment. Yeah. Definitely takes a lot of time commitment to 200% crash for. It takes skill as well. It takes both. It's not purely tedium. I did it again. Well, I can still get the gem. I have a hunch that the, the second Cortex head is in that pile, and I just screwed myself. So I, I now have to be very careful with how I kill that snake. I can still get the gem at least. I will have to come back one more time for the Cortex heads.
Doesn't even give you a box total. Alright, did we do it? Yeah. Color gem? Wait, it says I have the yellow one. Is that not yellow? Am I blind? How come the yellow platform didn't show up? All right, gotta get the cortex heads. This time I can kill myself. This time I don't gotta worry about not dying, so that, that helps. Sick this level yet? What have I got? You played a. I saw you playing Super Meat Boy for the first time recently, Darian. What did you What did you think of it? It's a game that I feel is, in some design aspects, similar to Crash, because it's supposed to be a series of like very short, difficult platforming challenges. I say short, and we're on this level. Uh... I didn't dislike Meat Boy, it just kind of didn't click with me in the same way. Because, I don't know, I guess it felt too short, too disconnected. Like, the challenges were just a series of rooms. I didn't really feel a sense of progression with Meat Boy like I do for Crash. Got through it faster than I anticipated. Oh, you got to the end. I think I lost interest before I actually finished it. Okay. Did I miss the first one? No, I got the first one, right? Yeah, I did. Okay. I don't think there was, like, a proper sequel for Meat Boy. There was Super Meat Boy Forever, which was the equivalent of, like, Super Mario Run, where he's constantly moving. Boy, it'd be swell to do this in one try and not have to do the Cortex stuff again. Don't gotta get every box, just gotta get to the end. Ah! Okay, but what if... Ah, oh, that set a checkpoint! I thought maybe I could go back to the checkpoint and collect the heads again. No, I can't. I gotta do it all over again. Annoying. I'm more annoyed by the fact that you only get one chance of the bonuses than I am by the fact that uh, you have to do the gems without dying. I'm more cool with that somehow.
At least I'm someone who knows how to jump. I'm grateful for that. Bishawk? I'm glad I'm not going through these levels as Laura Croft. Laura Croft would, had tr would have trouble here. I'd never considered that there would be a name for, like, platformers that strive for realism. Quote, unquote. I mean, they're never that realistic, but... They're categorized as cinematic platformers on, uh, on retro achievements. Stuff like Tomb Raider and Prince of Persia. Which, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Does Uncharted have, like, platforming elements? I've never played the Uncharted games. I assume they're very similar to Tomb Raider. Nope. That's a trap. What a, what a mean thing to do. Is to put these behind an enemy that is very easy to spin into crates. Okay, attempt number two. wary of Bizhawk just, like, doing its shit at any second. I know it's going to! <sighs> okay, give me your key. Yeah. Alright, two out of two keys. Budokai 1 and 2 have achievements, Budokai 3 does not. Which is disappointing, because that's, like, one of my favorite games ever. One of the cool things about, uh, the site... ...is that you can actually... ...by gaining points and achievements, you know, you upping your gamer score... ...you can, uh... The more points you have, you unlock more requests for achievements. So, I had enough points that I was able to put in a request for a, a Budokai 3 set. So if you up your quote-unquote gamer score, then you can request more games to, uh, you know, the games you like to get achievements for them. That's cool. I thought that was neat. It's nice that there's, like, some degree of, like, purpose for these points. This is a dick move. How dare they put shit back here? And the rafters? Really? <laughs> you have to reset if you die. You know what? I don't need to do this now. I can do this later. Castle machinery. It's the, the, uh, the, the... Rusty level part two. I could be naughty, but I won't. Legs of steel. I wonder if this level is the singular reason why there's not an achievement for 99 lives. It's just way too easy because of this level specifically. And if you don't know what I mean by that, it's because uh, had I taken that green gem at the start, I would have gotten like 20 lives and been taken straight to the end of the level. That's just like a cheaty McCheaty gem platform, is all that is.
there should be an achievement for taking that specific gem gem platform. It'd be called like, are you proud of yourself? I wonder how much testing they had to do before coming to the conclusion that that particular platform and only that platform had to, like, balloon out in order to go up. Nothing else in the game does that. I'm waiting to walk into a non-electric wall and electrocute myself. Because apparently that can happen. Hello? Uh, there they are. I was gonna say, I thought they started down here. I guess they're always moving, these two. We're getting most of the gems our first time through. Almost. We're over halfway for the gems. Already three and a half hours, so uh, my four-hour prediction is looking a little bit short. Without taking damage. I would I wish the text remained longer so I could actually see it. Oh, that's right, I gotta jump on them. No? Oh. Biz Hawk! I hate it. Maybe there's like a better core that I could use or something. Okay, so they can be spun eventually. They just take many spins as opposed to a single jump, I believe. Yeah. That's his great invention, spin-resistant slime. I think there- I think there's an achievement for, like, only facing forward against him? It's some- it was some stupid one.
You know what? I can still look at my, uh... I can still look at these on my profile. Let's see, where are the boss ones? Defeat Koala Kong without jumping and without taking damage. Defeat Pinstripe without letting him charge his gun more than three times. Charge his gun. Defeat Nitrous Brio without pressing up and without taking damage. Okay, so I was I was backwards. You can't face forward? Weird. And then defeat Cortex without taking damage. All right, here we go. Here's the lab. It's not as bad as I remember it being. Like, this level should be fine. I only remember it shittily because I had to do the time trial, and the time trial here was awful. This was the worst vanilla time trial in Crash 1. Second only to, uh... Second only to Stormy Ascent. Make sure I get everything. Never have too many lives. Thanks, Tana. I remember these guys. The bad touch men. Get out of here. But this section was a lot harder for people who didn't realize that you could stand on the sides. It doesn't feel like something that you should be able to do. You know what I mean by that? Like, it feels unintended, even though the fact that they put boxes, like, in the back of that dark level means they fully knew about it and it was clearly intended. and triangles if I can see boxes. I can't. They didn't give me that. Alright, one more gem. Is this colored one? Yeah, okay, so that's the yellow. I guess the other one was orange? Well, that's great. There's been a lot of stuff that we haven't been able to get because we didn't have yellow. So that was the last level save. I think the only way that we can have, like, a map with everything unlocked... ...is by, uh... World's Hardest Crash Bandicoot level, by the way. Is by having all, uh, like, 100% completion with all the gems. That's the only way you can get a file that loads with, like, Cortex map available. All right, let's see if we can do this with no damage. Rest in peace, Brendan O'Brien.
Another piece of trivia. Pretty much every character in this game was voiced by the same one guy, Brennan O'Brien. Wasn't until Crash 2 that uh, Cortex and the others got, like, unique voices. I think Brendan continued to voice Crash, and he continued to voice Brio, right? Or was someone else voicing Brio in Crash 2? Ah, oh, I got hit. I know Crash 2 started Cortex with uh, Clancy Brown. Which is my favorite Cortex voice. Lex does fine. Lex does a good job with Cortex. I'm, I'm still partial to Clancy. Which I think, uh... I think Lex took over in Wrath of Cortex and on? There he goes. Crash gets the girl. Kind of. I mean, they're together for now, but she's gonna, like, believe him for pinstripe. That is canonically what happens to Tana in this universe. Oh, I can pause the credits. Can I skip the credits? No? Alright. Well, enjoy the credits for a moment. We're not quite done. I'm gonna go back and get the gems that I missed. This music track is so quiet compared to the others, isn't it? So, Brendan O'Brien passed, and, uh... I believe... Who was the... I guess Aku Aku didn't speak in this game. Other than, you know, Rutabaga! When was the first time Aku Aku spoke? I believe it was Crash 3. And that was the one where he was voiced by the his, his original voice actor who also died. It was a uh, tribute to him in the Insane Trilogy. Or is it in Crash 4? One of them has a tribute to... Uh... I'm drawing a blank on the guy's name. He was replaced by uh, Greg Eagles for Aku Aku, who was otherwise known as the voice of Grimm in Billy and Mandy. Mel, Mel Winkler, that's the guy. Alright, 87%. Let us resume. What did we miss? We got Insanity Beach. Jungle Rollers. I'm still missing, I think, two colored gems. I wish I knew which levels they were on, but I don't. Not offhand, anyway. That's all right. We're, we get a break. We're back to the early game levels, so these will be easy. So I wonder... If I failed to get a Tana bonus on, like, level 5 or whatever it is... If I didn't... If I didn't clear that bonus, if I didn't get the three icons, and I then got a ton of bonus on level 10, and I saved my game with 10 levels oh completed. Does the earlier ton of bonus just disappear? Do the icons just not pop up, pop up in that level anymore? I would assume that's how it happens. It's a weird little gem secret. It's cool. Cool that you can go up here for no reason. 
Hey, look how big this structure actually is. Do you think that causes him pain? Does Aku Aku feel that? I wonder what it's like to be Aku Aku. We need we really need like a character study on this guy. Does he have like questions about himself like Alphonse Elric does? Is he unable to feel warmth? Does he miss the ability to feel warmth? Who really is Aku Aku? Is he just like Plank from Ed Ed Neddy? And, Cr and Crash was the one with the magical powers all along. Aku Aku was just a piece of wood. Is he Crash's Zanpak Toe Spirit? I'm gonna say yes, that's my canon. Now, you know what? He's Crash's stand. There we go. Everybody always asks, who is Aku Aku? No one asks, how is Aku Aku? I know I want that. I want to save him. This- okay, there we go. What's a good name for a band with, like, a jungle or a mask theme? I guess it could be a song, too. C call him Welcome to the Jungle. You know what's wacky? At the time this game came out, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, the manga was probably on part four, the part that we're watching now, in the mid-90s. And uh, part of Stardust Crusaders had already been animated, like the original OVAs. I think the oldest one is from 1993, was when Jotaro vs. Dio was first animated. Which, they did the original OVAs really strangely. They, uh... They first animated just the final fight with Dio. That was it. They didn't animate the entire story of Stardust Crusaders. Just... He gets to Dio and he fights him. Just the parts in uh, Dio's mansion. And then, I think in 1999 or something, they went back and they animated, like, six episodes as a lead-up. So as far as the original OVA goes, there's like six episodes of, of Dio, animated in 1993. And then the predecessor to that, it's, it's the Star Wars prequel trilogy, is what they did. They went back in 1999 and did the first six or seven episodes of the OVA. 
Not only that, but the art style between the two is, like, significantly different. So if you watch them in chronological order... You would get, like, uh... I, I think... I think the, the Jotaro versus the world, that, that part, the or 1993 part, is more or less, like, on model with the manga and closer to the original anime. The 1999 one is weird because Jotaro looks like this giant Rob Liefeld motherfucker. He looks 40, like, even more so than the manga version. And, uh, Joseph and anyone else who would have, like, old person gray hair has, uh, blonde hair instead. I think Polnareff might also be blonde. I don't know why, that version didn't like white hair. Excuse me for nerding out, nerding out about JoJo for a few minutes. I think just for the portions that that uh, that were covered, like the jo the Jotaro versus Dio fight, I do prefer the OVA version. It does some like interesting, creepy stuff because the uh, the director of Paranoia Agent and Perfect Blue was involved with the '93 JoJo, which is a weird thing for him to be involved in, but it came out cool because of it. And it's also, like, at, at the same time, it's it's weird because it's more, like, creepy and psychological because of his involvement. But at the same time, the action scenes are way more over the top in Dragon Ball Z than the final anime was. So it goes farther in both directions, the original OVA. Stardust Crusaders, but the stone mask is Uka Uka. Sure. He, he, Uka Uka looks like a mask that would probably, like, grow teeth on his backside and, and suck people's blood. That seems in character for him. You know who Uka Uka sounds like? His voice. He sounds like Yami from Bleach. The giant dumb Aron car. Same kind of voice. And kind of Grand Fisher as well. Similar voice. Ah! Fish. What are you guys doing with your days? Wednesdays are my day off, so I'm not doing too much besides why well, I'm doing this, but uh, what have I got? I've been trying to find work on that uh, that site for uh, like acting and writing work, but I, I haven't got any callbacks, so. I'm getting a little worn out of attempting it. I may I may have to resort to uh, I may have to resort to my backup. I may have to go into uh, into trucking soon, which I wasn't too keen on, but it's better than school bus driving. I'm definitely not going back to school bus driving. But they really put like multiple gem spots on this level. What are they doing? They didn't need to do that. Did I even get, get any more boxes on that route? 
I wasn't, I guess I wasn't fully paying attention. The Rolling Stones. Maybe the Embryo achievement only procs if I get the one on this level, because this is the first one in the game. It'd be a weird way to do it, but it's possible, I guess. Oh, this could be bad. No, oh, that blew up the Embryo. I needed that. Possibly. If I need to, uh, if I need to, like, replay for some achievements, it's fine. Especially something like that one. I, I can just start a new file and get to, like, level two. What have we got? Or whatever level this is. This is, like, level six or something. It's still not too bad, though. This is another dumb one. I can clearly see there's ground down there. But, uh, I'm not allowed to fall. I have to ride the gem down. To this weird jungle cortex tunnel. Why is this here? I don't know. Not important. Okay, cool. Hello, Mr. Weed Whacker. Someone's whacking weeds. Let me see if I can get Brio this time. It's weird that they put some of the tokens in this game in uh, those bounce crates. There's like two or three instances of that. And it's kind of a dumb thing to do since a lot of the time it seems like people are like not going to want to break those all ten times. You missed it, Derry, and some uh, some Mexican fella came in earlier and insisted that I do the boulder chase level. And seemed to be very giddy when I died, even though I did not die to the boulder. But, uh, well, I'm glad he was happy, I guess. Final Brio. Did I not complete this? I could swear I did this one. Give me achievement. No? 
What happened? What's wrong? I'm gonna have to figure out why that one's not procking. Oh, what? What did I miss? Where? I went down the hole, right? What could I have possibly missed? I did. I did go down the hole. That was the part where we do the level over the exact same way we just did, except we didn't miss five boxes this time. And we don't know what's different. I'm pretty sure the Brio bonuses don't count towards the crate totals, do they? Are there more boxes in this one? You said some were mean in one of the games. Uh... Crash 2 has, like, one or two boxes that are really not obvious. Like, there's no real way to see them. I can't think of any instances of that in this game. Here you go, Darian. I only got a couple O's in. Did I miss any in the Brio level? If it does if it does count those, then I'm going to be slightly annoyed. I guess that would explain why they uh I guess that would explain why the Brio tokens never disappear though. exact same way as last time. If I'm still missing multiple crates, then it must be the Brio ones. Nope. As far as I can tell, I did everything exactly the same that time, but I guess I got all the boxes. Oh well. It's just some weird effect that happens in Crash games sometimes. I have no idea what I did differently, but I apparently missed boxes one time. I don't know where they went. Alright, do I have the necessary gem for this level? I don't recall what color is needed. It, I, I want to say red, and I don't remember if I have red or not. Oh no, I missed a lot. Wait, what the fu- I'm down to 32. When had that happen? Did I reset the game? Oh, because I reloaded. You don't keep your lives with your save in this game. Not that it matters. I, I don't- I'm still gonna, like, not run out of lives, but... I was gonna say, how do I lose that many lives? I 
wonder what it's doing when it does that. Lives don't carry over. Yeah, uh... Okay, cool. Yeah, just halt my momentum in the air, that's fine. I definitely wanted to fall straight down. Uh, Donkey Kong did that. And it was super annoying in Donkey Kong. Because, uh... No, it wasn't the live. Well, the lives reset too, but it was the uh, your coins would reset, and it cost coins to save the game or to change world maps. So a lot of the time in Donkey Kong Country 2, you'd have to uh, like boot up your game and then immediately grind just to perform basic tasks. Gonna be mad if I get to the end of this level, and I can't do it. I can't do it! I don't have the red one! Crash 1. Colored gems. I don't want to waste any time, so let's just see what levels these are in. Toxic Waste, Slippery Climb. Uh, Slippery Climb slash the Lost City. Ah! Slippery Climb is a colored gem. That's the one I skipped because it sucked. Slippery Climb and Lights Out are the other two. Here we are. Back again. Here we are. Tell your friends. I guess it's true. Quitters never win. You hear that, smokers? Ah! You know what I loved? The blue gem in Crash 2. The one where you had to, like, get through a level without getting any boxes. I like the idea of gems being attached to a specific challenges like that. That's like an achievement thing. I wish the- I wish the Crash games did things like that more. They kind of- they kind of don't. Crash 4 kind of did, but it chose to do it in dumb spots. Like hitting an RC car three times for a gem or something. That was a weird one. I didn't like that. Man. Four hours. Nope, we're doing it. I said I was going to do it. We're going to do it. I'm not done yet. Aren't we? We're at like 90%. But we need some of the, like, the stupidest gems in the game are still waiting for us.
We're still gonna have to do Cortex Power. Oh, Cortex Power. Is that supposed to be like a power plant? Is that the implication? The way it's phrased makes it sound like he, he owns a power plant. Like, is he selling electricity to the islanders? Do they have alarm clock radios in their huts? Why is it phrased like he owns a company? back to a uh, Spyro 4 concepts. I guess given the precedent with the pre with the first three games, I think it'd be good if it was a new villain again, because all the first three games had their own unique villains. I don't know what exactly plot, I, I, what exactly the plot could revolve around. Were there any like loose ends in Spyro 1 through 3? No, you know what? Money bags. Money bags can be the villain. Like the full final villain of Spyro 4. I want to do like a full, uh, like a scrappy do situation. Where this petty motherfucker goes to extreme lengths to get his revenge on this little dragon who wanted his money back. Get Milton James back. He was my favorite Vegeta. I'm so glad that the Brio levels aren't counted towards the crate total. Get out of here, Jafar. No! I don't want to go to the Brio level! Nope. This is the run. We're gonna do it. See, we just needed a break from this level. We just needed a little break, and now we're gonna do it first try. Crash was born for this. Bizhawk did the thing. I'm worried. Are we good? Are we clear? I think we're good. It's the end. We're here. We have a mask. Alright. That is everything. Red gem. Give me the red. 92. It's so close. We're so close to 100. Look at the number go up. Brain feel good when number go up. We're stuck at 30 out of 32 levels, because that's the final level with a Tana save. Alright, that's the red one. Purple one is lights out. So, appropriately. It looks so concerned. I don't think Crash likes the dark. I wonder if Kid Me would have liked these games less, or the soundtrack less pizzicato. Because I do enjoy me some pizzicato. Nah, probably not. I loved Spyro. That had a totally different style of soundtrack. Which is not really the kind of music I would listen to, but... I respect it. It's Spyro music. 
It's iconic. No matter what Jack thinks. Jack, I remember Jack being very unimpressed with the Spyro soundtrack. He thought it sounded very generic. I challenged him to name any other games that had a similar sound, and he, he, he couldn't, so, yeah. Fuck you, Jack. Ah, yeah, Bizhawk! Bizhawk, we good? Okay, so if we went ahead from here, it would just be the single mask. There's no more boxes past this point. I paid attention the first time we went through the level. So it should just be these. Which is good, because once you go up here, I don't think you can go back down again. Yeah. All right, we now have all the colored gems. Now we can get all the regular gems. We're good. We're on the home stretch. Island 2's just got to be weird. It's got to go right to left. Just to keep you from mashing left to get to the start of the game. Alright, Native Fortress. One more time. Native what? Whatever. Doesn't matter. One of the lines that uh, Jack and I like to reference is in one of the one of the Dragon Ball movies. The original Dragon Ball had three movies that were just a completely separate continuity from the anime or manga. They just totally went off in their own direction. And I think it was the third one introduced uh, Upa and his father, the, the giant Native American looking dude. Along with Chaozu being an emperor for some reason, but that's beside the point. There's a scene where a bunch of soldiers come in and uh, state that we're looking for a tall, a large native man. Which you don't think about until you consider the fact that Dragon Ball Earth looks absolutely nothing like actual Earth. Which begs the question, native what? He's not Native American. America doesn't exist. Pokemon kind of gets by with that because, in theory, like, real countries do exist. It's just like these Pokemon regions are within them. Although even then, they've, like, slowly backpedaled Pokemon taking place in, like, the real world, so to speak. Lieutenant Surge is the Lightning American, but they're not going to reference America anymore past that point. It's just kind of a remnant of the uh, Gen 1 days. Also mentioned South America in that game. That, that's where Mew was a, apparently a, originally found. I kind of miss that era. I wonder how different the Pokemon series would be if they continued in that direction. Because the original premise for Pokemon was basically My Hero Academia. It was, our world was, you know, reality, it was our world, and then one day these creatures appeared. That was the original premise of Pokemon. According to that, like, official Pokedex that predates, like, Gen 1.
I wonder if we would have gotten like more reference to uh, the great incident, the appearance of Pokemon for the first time. I don't know. Well, I, I think it would have been interesting. Yeah, just walking on clouds. Don't worry about it. These are the least cloud-looking clouds I've ever walked on in a video game. I don't trust walking on these. Uh-oh! Love the stage's skybox. Well, it's gonna be a while before we get to see it again. What have I got? What's some crash stuff I could talk about? Uh, there's an entry on Retro Achievements for a Crash 1 prototype. Implying that a prototype ROM for this game exists and is, is just like floating around out there? Maybe I'll look into that. Maybe I can stream the Crash Bandicoot 1 prototype. It doesn't have any achievements. No one's made a set for it, but it exists, apparently. There was a uh, Crash Bandicoot cartoon intro which personally I'm glad that didn't get made because it looked very goofy which I, I, I know Crash Bandicoot but in a way that didn't really feel like Crash Bandicoot it felt more, felt more like Bubsy I'm glad we didn't get a Bubsy like Crash Bandicoot cartoon is all I'm saying There's also that weird scene in Skylanders where Crash speaks. And he's like fully intelligent and has just a like an Australian accent. As far as Crash oddities go. That always looked like a very, very strange scene to me. I don't like Crash speaking in complete sentences. It, it, it upsets me deeply. Just like Mario. Mario should never speak in complete sentences. Bizhawk? Yeah, I don't think I'm going to use this emulator again, if I can help it. I'm gonna have to for like off off stream stuff for like getting achievements, but uh, boy, I would love to not stream with this ever again. This occasional just like hiccuping is very frustrating. boxes back here. Is it worth going back here? No more audio issues, but now you have occasional lag. I guess uh, the audio issues were on the Insane Trilogy, and I don't remember what the source of it was. Unless you mean the original Crash 1 streams. Which, yeah. I think the issue with those was just the game was too loud.
All right, attempt number two in the non-cloud clouds. Attempt number two in Leon. Oh, it is a nice skybox. It's got, like, the other two islands. Which, I guess... Island 2 has a giant tree on it? I like how Crash can fall from this and he'll be totally fine. But, uh... He can't fall down that, that cortex hole, or he'll die. What's that about? Now's a good time to uh, go to the bathroom, get a drink. Alright, down we go. Why why do I die when I fall here? I should just fall down to the lower part of the level. Like, see, if I fall here, I'm fine. It's weird, arbitrary fall death locations in Crash Bandicoot 1. Deeply upset me. I'm going to write a letter to Naughty Dog. Demanding a patch for Crash Bandicoot 1 on the PlayStation 1. Because I find the game unrealistic. Oh, inconsistent more than unrealistic. They're still around. Naughty Dog still exists. They're still doing things, right? Is Uncharted still them, or did someone else buy Uncharted? They made an Uncharted movie, didn't they? Right, please don't miss any. Please have every box. Boy, that'd be just swell. Yeah. Do I have to go through my entire collection every single time? Someone thought this was important. I assume they don't do that in, uh, in Insane Trilogy. It's been a while, so I don't remember, but that seems like something that they would change to not happen. Alright. Bridge level. What have I got? Starting strong. Got invincibility. Can't wait to die anyway, because this is a bottomless pit level. Invincibility won't matter. I think even the pigs are just immune to invincibility. I'll just... Whoop! Over them. The Shaolin Showdown ass music. Soundtrack by Kevin Menthe, who also worked on Invader Zim. It's a slightly tedious area. Wait, oh no, was I supposed to do that? Okay, and then that, that, that spawns the extra TNT. There we go. Yeah, invincibility. What am I going to do with that here? Thanks.
cool. I don't remember if we got the second bridge level. Or if I said, nope, I'll come back to this later. I might have been lazy. This is a pretty early game, well, middle of the game level. They're having you do, like, one tile jumps everywhere. And here are the turtles. I hate these turtles. I hear it. There it is. It sucked to accidentally jump over this onto the ending. Okay. Wait, what? Oh no! Oh, I remember this shit! How dare you. Assholes. Can I speed through it? No, I can't. I can't make this go any faster. Okay, 96. We're almost done. Three more. Three more gems, and then we beat Cortex again. Well, kind of. Actually, we don't. Alright, now we can do the boulder level. I want you to be proud of your work. Well, I'm not. In fact, I'm very self-conscious about my work. Every one of those gems is a reminder that I could have done better. Another weird annoying quirk about the, uh, the huge adventure, the Game Boy Advance game. You can't, like, smoothly spin through a stack of two crates. If there's two crates, then you, you break the bottom one and then you, like, dead stop. Why, Bizhawk? So, how, what happens is that if I'm holding a button and Bizhawk decides to hiccup, it just stops receiving that input, and Crash just stands in place for a second. It just decides to cut all input for, like, 30 to 60 frames. It's like playing Smash, except your ISP is holding your internet hostage. And they can decide to show you they mean business at any moment. Terrifying noise, whatever that is. The wolf howl, or whatever that's supposed to be. That was the creepiest shit as a kid. That and the didgeridoo made these levels just incredibly scary, just because of the music. I don't remember what the uh, Insane Trilogy version of this music track sounds like. 
I don't remember the music sounding significantly different in Insane. Uh, the Spyro remaster gave you the option for both versions, if I remember correctly, of, uh, of, of music. He's so sad when he runs. Uh, can I just jump this? Is this safe? Yeah, okay. I probably shouldn't call this, like, a chill stream if I'm making noises like that. I like to think my solo streams are usually pretty chill just because I'm, I'm like, a mellow dude. Then, then something happens, and then I'm not mellow. And then a couple seconds later I'm back to being mellow. It's probably very jarring. I say this every crash stream, but I love this game's this uh, this series' musical identity. It's really hard to find like a musical style that's all your own, and I'm very impressed that uh, Crash and Spyro both managed to do it just very well. You you can instantly recognize a Crash song or a Spyro song, and a Mario song. Mario has a very distinct musical identity. Sonic, kind of. Sonic music has always kind of just been a trend chaser. In the early days, it was all based off of, uh, like, pop music. A little bit of Japanese rock. And then in the adventure eras, it just became, you know, what they call butt rock. I call it, like, Sega rock. It was kind of like an imitation pop-punk kind of thing. But it wasn't just Sonic. Like, multiple Sega games had that style. I hate, I hate these plants. I hate this hole. I have no depth perception in this hole. Because the camera is so low that I cannot see the shadow beneath me. That is my problem with this hole. And it's at the end of the level, so every time I die, I have to do the whole level over again. It's a short level, thankfully, but still. Who's setting off these boulders? Is it the tribe folk? Do they not like Crash? Well, I guess they don't, because they're attacking him, so... This doesn't seem like the kind of thing that Cortex would be behind. I don't think Cortex's grand plan would be to roll a giant rock at Crash Bandicoot. That That's more some, like, Wile E. Coyote shit.
All right, attempt number three. It's a cool looking cave. It's the only time in the game we really get like an area like this. Okay. Is that it? Is that everything? Oh, there's like, like Brio's on the wall too. What an unflattering Cortex face to put on the wall. Do you think he approved that? Cock in the people's eyebrow. Two more. It'll be sub five hours. It was still longer than I anticipated. All right, we did whole hog. Whole horse. Cortex power. Here we go. Here's the level. Here, this is the worst gem in the game. And we've had some pretty bad ones so far. So, I have to go through most branches of this level. And it's not just a two-way split. This level is like multi-branched pathing. I have to go through most of these branches all without dying. Is this the dead end? Yeah, it's the dead end. Eh, I got rid of it. I don't need it. Is Hawk? So here's this. The checkpoint doesn't even help because I have to do it in one attempt without dying. Okay, maybe it's not as bad as I thought. Because this looks like it goes back to where we just were. Okay, no, but I have to take the I have to take the blue gem path. Is there anything back this way? I gotta make sure. The farthest back that this should go. Hello. Is this, okay. Okay, so I didn't need to go back this way. I just needed to backtrack to the blue gem. Just gotta, gotta remember the pathing is all. Ah, uh, I thought that would go all the way to my platform. It doesn't. level.
it's two more. Just two more. Okay, don't need to go that way. Real dick move putting boxes on so many of these paths. I'm gonna include this to my letter in my letter to Naughty Dog. Dear Naughty Dog, your game is too hard. Please patch your game. Do not be so hard. Actually, you know what they fucking did? Well, they didn't, but uh, they did in fact do exactly that. They released a version of this game that is not so hard. Why am I not playing that one? I don't know. Masochist. No! I did. There's enough room on that platform for me to land, but... Barely. I don't trust it. This music track is very quiet. It is the same music track as the lab, though, so I guess that uh, confirms my suggestion that they're the same level type. Gonna get hit by these guys. I'm going to safely get this checkpoint crate. It's so it's so perilous. I don't like it. I'm gonna go back this way to the blue gem. Safely. And we already checked that there's nothing back there. Why does Cortex have, like, vats of standing toxic waste? This is so not OSHA, it's painful. I guess that's why he's on an uninhabited, like, island in Oceania. But obviously he's up to illegal shit. Man! The gem is so small. I'm afraid to just walk onto it. I'm gonna fall if I just try to walk onto it. Alright, then this goes back. Hello, Havier. You just got, uh, what, it's the retro achievements? Or are you talking about the Insane Trilogy? Oh, there, there would be boxes here. Man. Are there more? Is that... that's? I'm gonna assume that's it. I'm not gonna risk going back further. Sadly, I'm having trouble with the uh, site today, so... I had, like, a little display that showed the achievements on the side, but the site does not want to load, so. Ah, oh, this. Great. Cortex power. Done. All of them. Please be all of them. Ah! 
Was it in the spot? Was it in the one spot that I didn't go? Worst level. I hate Cortex Bower. I hate it so much. I'm- uh, yeah, okay. I'm gonna go straight to that one path to confirm if there are or are not any crates there. If there are not, then it's gonna be the thing again where we go through the, the level in exactly the same way. But somehow we have all the crates this time and we don't know why. Great. Alright. Awesome. That's fine. This run is just recon. Road to Nowhere is the worst. Road to Nowhere was pretty bad. I still think this is worse because of all the branching paths and the backtracking. The lab was the worst relic, but thankfully relics are not in this game. Well, thankfully. I would do them if they were in this game, but... For the sake of getting it all done in one stream. Definitely better that they're not. What have I got? Is this the way? Okay, here's the checkpoint. So I get this. There does not appear to be anything more on this route. No, that is- that's it. I went the whole way. So, in that case... Was there something down this way that I forgot about? Do I need to go back further than the blue gem? This goes to the door with the shooter guy here. That's the active shooter route. I don't want to go that way. What could I have missed? Well, I guess I'll just try again. General, this set is not easy at all. I guess. It, it didn't look too bad. It, it looked... For the most part, it's just... Uh, it's just completing Crash 1. I hate the sets that, uh, like, go beyond the scope of completing the game and are ludicrously difficult. The only really, really bad set that i found so far is uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1. Which I'm still attempting, but uh, there's one that is, like, pro speedrunner shit. Like, it really needs reevaluated, but I don't know that it's going to be. This is the dead end with the shooter man. We have to meet this shooter man. We can we can avoid the other one. Does that surely that wouldn't activate something behind us? That that exclamation box? Surely we don't need to hit that and then backtrack again. Right? I can't imagine. Hawk, hello. No. Nothing over here. That's just the other shooter guy.
That's what I was worried about happening. That's why I was trying to spin it. But it can happen either way, so... Okay, so we confirmed that there was nothing back this way. Right? Man! Wasted a mask. This just goes back to the shooter. The gunman. Box on the right after destroy the first pile of boxes. What have I got? If I'm still missing one crate after all this, then I'll have to look at what that could have possibly activated. Oh. TNT, thank you. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Sorry, one moment. I just ran out of disk space. Have we really been going that long? What do I have that's taking up so much disk, disk space? Well, now I'm going to have to splice these together. Excuse me for, like, a couple minutes. I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to move this recording and start another one. Sorry about that. If you're watching on YouTube, I just, uh, I just ran out of disk space. And I had to, I had to spend, like, 30 minutes moving the recording so far to my external drive. That's never happened before. I guess I'll have to keep it in mind if I ever do another big stream like the uh, Crash 2 one we did. What a shame, because we only have like 30 minutes of this left, too. Hopefully. I hope I didn't just jinx it by saying that. I almost played Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, but I didn't quite have enough time. I missed three bo- how'd I miss three boxes that time? Okay, I must have not done something because I was distracted by the 30-minute absence. Alright, one more time- for real this time. It's not something stupid, there's not boxes back here, is there? I have it on the backlog. I'll, 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 I have it in mind for if there's ever another occasion that I need a, uh, like a long BRB song. Just for posterity's sake. I played, uh, Kane's Offering, I Will Build You a Rome. I played Symphony X, The Odyssey. And I played Avantasia, Piper of the Gates of Dawn. Kane's offering not... Why am I hiding? Kane's offering not being Stradivarius, but sharing the uh, lead singer of Stradivarius. is uh, Timo, Cody, Timo Cody Pelto. I think it's... Uh, Kane's offering is the team-up of him and... The... I think it's the singer from Sonata Arctica? Don't quote me on that. You've listened to that one. I have not gotten around to listening to Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. I, I do remember that you said it was your favorite Iron Maiden song, though. And I do intend to listen to it for that reason. Again, just haven't gotten around to it. I'm very, I'm very backlogged on music. I have a lot of music that I need to uh, need to get to. I spent way too long recently uh, getting all of the Dungeon Fighter Online music. Because there's some songs I really like in that soundtrack, but holy crap, is there a lot in that soundtrack to go through? It's like it's like 
just short of a thousand songs at this point. This is a trap. I gotta wait for this. I might actually upload those to, uh, I might upload, uh, upload those to YouTube as I finish them, the uh, Dungeon Fighter music, because they exist, but they're, like, smattered across different YouTube channels, they're very disorganized, and they're not really edited to be in, like, a listenable format. Like a video game song, you expect to uh, loop twice, maybe, and then fade out. Okay, once again, we're at the end of the level. Did I... I did go back, didn't I? Did I go back to that one route with the one box by itself? No, I didn't, because this is it. Is this the way? Yeah, this is the way. So this is the one box. It said I missed three last time. How could I have missed three? Have I mentioned that I hate this level? It's also so easy to just fall in the in the acid here at the end and ruin it all after such a long attempt. All right. Please What changed? What what was different? Okay, great. I don't know why that took five attempts. I failed in my speedrun attempt. If I'd gone faster, I wouldn't run out of di I wouldn't have run out of disk space. Oh, what's left? What's the last one? Fumbling in the dark. Okay, this is our very last gem of the game. Okay, we were so close to being done. Alright, here we go. Here's this, this stupid section that I have to do in one attempt. These don't look like jumps that a video game would should expect you to make. Bizhawk? Bizhawk? Jumping around, like, doors in and out like that. So, uh, during the break, among other things, I saw an article for, uh, Top 10 Crash Bandicoot Games. Which, again, as is always the case with these kinds of, like, clickbait articles, it's one dude's opinion. But, uh, this particular person... I'm going to wager a guess, was probably born around 2005, because number 6 and number 7 were Crash of the Titans and Mind Over Mutant. The ones that, to my understanding, no one liked. They were both rated above, uh, above both Twin Sanity and Wrath of Cortex, according to this person. And Crash Bash. I understand that one more. I, Crash Bash, I, I like that. that. I'm weird like that. Fucking Biz... Uh, Bizhawk! You know what would have made this go faster? A different emulator. Yes, sir. We, we would have finished this before the, the space ran out. If it wasn't Bizhawk... Sure has been the stream of all time. I don't think I had any planned, uh, like long streams in mind anyway, but. Crash of the Titans above Twin Sanity. 
Crash Warped was this person's favorite. They thought Crash Warped was number one. Come on, stupid axe. I think the top ones were like, uh, it was Warped, then Crash 4, then Crash Team Racing, then Crash 2, then Crash 1. That was the top five. Get out of here. It's strange that they liked Crash Warped so much, but ranked Wrath of Cortex so low. Maybe it was like an Uncanny Valley thing. Maybe, maybe they were offended at the attempt to rip off their precious child, Crash Warped. Okay, let, let's talk about our rankings. So here, I'll, I'll, let me talk about mine. Crash 2 is my favorite. I think Crash 2 perfected the platforming. It added enough like elements and depth with the slide and everything to be like a really interesting, unique, just fun platforming game. With uh, some interesting and unique levels. Even fleshing out like the stuff that Crash 1 did, like adding the dash to the polar bear as opposed to the pig. The warthog. So Crash 2 is my favorite. I think Crash 1 still has a lot of charm, even though it's simpler, just because... Well, b because it's simpler. It's it's a more, like, uh... It's a more, like, dedicated, pure platforming challenge. Crash 3 deviated from the platforming too much. Uh... I think I'm gonna say Crash 2, then Crash... Four, then crash one. Then crash three for me. Then crash uh, Wrath of Cortex. I've kind of, I've flip-flopped on that because Wrath of Cortex, the engine does, like, it has flaws compared to crash three. It is a worse engine, but I like the levels better. I think the the gimmicks are gen are on average better. And they a lot of them transition to platforming halfway through the level. Which I appreciate, because when I play Crash, I want to play a platforming game. Not, like, a, a series of minigames. I'm actually rank crack, Crash Bash above Wrath of Cortex. Hard to say. Those are, those are really close for me. And I don't really care about the racing games. Well, I don't like this. Okay, I made it. Sorry, Darren. I'll look at your list in a moment. Fuck! Frickin'! Nah! Uh, I hate it! I'm fine. I'm alive. Two, one, four, three. To insanity, entranced. Okay, they were similar. They have similar lists. I hate that you can spin into the thing and get it early because then you have less time with him! Damn it. Okay, if we're, if we're doing top 10, let me think. Two, one, four, three. Wrath of Cortex. Crash Bash. That's six. I 
I have a really hard time after that, after six. Uh... I think... I think I like the GBA games next best. I don't know, I, I would assume Entrance was better than Huge Adventure. I haven't replayed it yet. I remember liking both of them when I streamed them. So six, let's say seven and eight are Entranced and Huge Adventure. Then... Crash Team Racing re Nitro Fueled, then Twin Sanity. I'll, I'll, I'll give Twin Sanity my number ten. I don't like Twin Sanity, but I don't I don't hate it either. I can definitely tolerate it a lot more than I can tolerate the uh, the other PS2 games. Well, the the beat 'em ups rather. Should have waited on that. They made this level not only tight with the uh, masks, but also difficult. Which is a pain, because if you take a hit, like that, like so, suddenly you have no mask. And therefore no visibility. Hey everybody, what about spot what about uh, Crash Purple? Any fans of Crash Purple? How about Crash Boom Bang? Statistically, that's someone's favorite Crash game. Considered streaming that. Haven't committed to it. Could happen. Are we done? Is this it? Someone took all the unused cutscene concepts from Twin Sanity and animated them. Neat. They were in, like, the, the gallery. In the unlockable gallery in the game, right? Like, cutscene ideas. Alright. We did it. See? Now it's, it's not 30 levels, it's 32 levels. Now that we have all the gems, they acknowledge that we've done everything. Hello, Illatox. Thank you for staying. Oh, that was, uh, that was something. Well, we're not quite done yet. We still have the fi the true final level. Like, fuck, I was gonna do, uh, do Stormy Ascent on top of all this. Only just got back from being AFK. You missed, uh, you missed me running out of recording space and having to spend, like, 35 minutes playing music instead of streaming. It's a nice looking level. Cortex has a pleasant castle. Look, there's Tana art too. And here we get the non canon ending Pacifist Crash. Where he doesn't fight Cortex at all. He just fucking leaves. Nope. 
Ain't nobody got time for that, Cortex. That's it. That's the end. That's the 100% ending. They just fly away. Oh, sorry. Papu sold the ruins of Castle Cortex to a resort developer. He then used the proceeds to open a big and tall shop on the island. After intense therapy and eight years of higher education, Dr. Rue went on to write the well-received book Through the Eye of the Vortex, a study of rapid evolution and its consequences. Kualakong moved to Hollywood and landed a motion picture deal of universal proportions. Currently, he is working with a speech therapist to improve his diction. Do you think he sounds like Arnie? Is, is Schwarzenegger Kong? Pinstripe moved to Chicago, where he now owns and operates a citywide sanitation company. He is saving money for his upcoming gubern gubernatorial campaign. I'd vote for Governor Pinstripe. Would you? After the disappearance of his mentor, Dr. Nitris Brio rediscovered his first love, Tending Bar. Until the next game. Gubernatorial. That's like running for mayor or running for governor, I think. It's like small government, government race. The world has heard nothing more of Cortex since Crash foiled his plans, but evil geniuses are harder to squash than cockroaches. But he didn't foil his plans. He just left. I have several questions about this ending. So since Crash 2 opens with Cortex falling from the blimp after the boss fight. This, are there any other games where the 100% ending is the non-canon ending? Like, you don't, you don't work for the true ending, you work for the untrue ending in this game. This is the ending we deserve but don't get. I said this before. Tana canonically just runs off with Pinstripe after this. Crash doesn't even get the girl in the end. Maybe he won the election. Maybe she's the first lady of, I don't know, Rhode Island right now. So where, where did it say he went? Chicago? I like how they reference Ruparu's ending, though, in Crash 2. He's like, uh, he's in the midst of studying. He's in college when you fight him in Crash 2. Well, that's it. Let's give one final attempt to see if Retro Achievements will load. I'm gonna guess it won't. No? Nothing? Nothing. Well, I got the achievements anyway. You heard them. You can look at my profile if you want to. Yep, that's it for today. Boy, what, what, uh, what a struggle. 20 minutes. 20 minutes for the end recording. If, I, if it could have just gone 20 minutes longer. Alright, well, I'll have to splice this together for, uh, for YouTube. I'm not I'm not restreaming the other ones. I just wanted to restream this one because again, the original streams were removed. So, uh thank you guys for hanging out. And uh we'll see you probably this weekend for something with Jack. We don't know what yet, but uh, we'll find out then. Cool demo. Crash just died. All right. Bye-bye.